Right, come on, you four-eyed fat face fool. Tell us what's going to be in the new podcast from the two mics. Well, plenty of buffoonery from you and lots of sense from me. What else? On DAB Digital Radio, and 1089 and 1053 AM. Hawksby and Jacobs are currently enjoying two weeks all-inclusive holiday in Wales they won in a ladies' magazine. So Mike Parry and Mike Graham are here instead. On Talk Sport. Good afternoon, I'm Mike Graham, he's Mike Parry, you're listening to the two mics and we're still minding the store while Hawksby and Jacobs are away. It's a big night in Madrid as Manchester City try to get to their first Champions League final ever. The only thing standing in their way, of course, is the team that's won it ten times. We'll be hearing from Mark Sagers ahead of the live talk sport commentary game tonight. Tim Vickery will be checking in with all the big football stories from Brazil. And Porky will be complaining about the noise of leaf blowers interrupting his daytime slumbers. 08717 Also coming up on the show, it's Porky Vision, the best TV review this side of the Bay of Biscay. You won't want to miss uh, what he hasn't seen on television this week. You've been listening, of course, to The Two Mics with me, Mike Graham, and Mike Parry. Uh, and you're going to be listening all day as well. This is Talk Sport. We are The Two Mics. It's time to say a very good afternoon to Mr Mike Porky Parry. Very good afternoon to you, Mr Parry. And a good afternoon to you, Mike. And I have to say, it's, uh, it's an important day today for a number of reasons. But the most important reason... I'm going to talk to you about Pep Guardiola in a minute, oh, OK? OK, all right. Because there's question marks now arising, in my opinion, about, you know, Pep Guardiola... Well, hang on, he's reckon... gone to the semi-final of the Champions League every single year he's been at Bayern Munich. Uh, four consecutive years. Yeah. Um, but and the, the year before exactly, that as well. Exactly, that's what I mean. You well, know, it's not a bad but, record, is it? It's a terrible record. He's supposed to be winning record. Champions League. Right. It's, a, it's a shocking record. Mm. And I tell you something... I did tell you I thought I'd let's go Madrid to get through, didn't I? You did, actually, and I didn't disagree with you because mm. they have that spirit amongst them. They have that fight, that desire, that will to win, which uh, I see in every pore of their body. Mm. Reminds me a lot of myself. No, but listen, <laughs> that's not the most How important... How bizarre. That's not the most important yes. thing. Guess what the most important thing is? What is it? The chimpanzees that I've been um, campaigning for for so long... Which ones? The Liberian ones. Oh, right, not the one in New York that's still No, 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 no. Tommy, who's in his concrete cage, we're yeah. still fighting that one. But the chimpanzees that I was trying to liberate from an island just off Liberia, uh-huh. right? Yeah. We haven't actually uh, liberated them. No, so it's not really a triumph, is it? It is. A bank has paid some uh, money. Citigroup, Citigroup, yeah. uh, a massive international bank, and yeah. clearly a bank with a heart, has donated 50,000 US dollars to support the chimps yeah. abandoned by the New York Blood Centre. That's, that, less, than the, mind, uh, that's less than the average bonus that they that, pay uh, to their bankers every, every year, isn't it? In, it's not in, very much money. In, chimpan, in chimpanzees... Chimpanzee. Yeah, in chimpanzees' money, yeah. that's 50 million. What can you get for uh, 50 grand in chimpanzee money, then? An awful lot of bananas. Really? Seriously. Yeah. And... and Medical help. Uh, you can you can um, set up a permanent. These, sort are, of these are the chimps that have been, stra- been stranded there by the yes. New York Blood Centre, right? Because they yes. used to sort of give them diseases, and they're all diseased chimps, aren't they? Well, they were given diseases yeah. so that man, you know, could find out what sort of impact diseases yeah. have on 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 the um, the creature nearest to Homo sapien, yes. you know, and that's obviously the chimpanzee. It is a pretty sad state of affairs. It's a sad state. Well, of I don't see how you can claim to have made any victory. Well, at because all. I raised Nothing it. To do with you. I raised it. Right. I raised it. We have millions of listeners here. We have um, another few million around the world listening to our, our um, what do you call it, podcast. Well, they listen to the radio live as well around the world. They you know, do, they do, they the do. the sports station in the world. I, you can I actually agree. listen to it on the radio if you wish. Funny, on enough, the I, funny enough, I talked to uh, one of our colleagues, John Norman, oh, yeah. who is uh, an incredibly active uh, member of staff here. And he's Down at Talk been... Sport 2. No, that's right, absolutely. Yeah. He's recently been in uh, New Zealand. He was there, yeah. Um, cricketing and all that kind of stuff. And he told me I'm a legend in New Zealand. You? Well, no, actually, he said the two mics are a legend. You know oh, what I mean? In, right. in, in so New you Zealand. immediately took it upon well, yourself to no, assume no, that he's no, talking about no, you. No, 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 no. But, I mean, they, they love listening to the programme mm. live in daytime hours, you see what I mean? Yes. And, in fact... What I do you think... mean, like now? Like, no, no. When we're working overnight, oh, they listen to daytime hours. Right now in New Zealand, yeah. uh, 13 hours ahead, oh, it's... They... It's uh, so two what time in the eight oh two a.m. Eight oh two a.m. Yes. How do you make that? It's thirteen hours ahead. Thirteen hours. Mm. Well, wouldn't that be two oh eight then? 
What? Oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah, 208 well, AM. Num- mathematically two, two, dyslexic. No, no. Yeah, a bit. Let's little, get 802 bit, yeah. from 108. <laughs> well, I knew there's a 2 and an 0 and an 8 in there. That God. was all. So when do you um, ever get in here on time at, a, at so, any point of the week? So what I'm saying is, when you have that sort of reach around the globe, it's clearly people are listening. Ah. So I, I just think it's brilliant. I was almost reduced to tears when I heard this news. Almost. Uh, yeah, almost, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I, you know, I feel so good about it. I'm, I might go and, I don't know, maybe have a sherbet after the show or something. Well, I'm, very, because, well, I'm very happy for you. You know, it's... It, it's great stuff. Some good news for you this week, yeah. then. Anyway, what do you think of Pep Guardiola's record? Do you think he's done well to get to four well, semi-finals in think, four years? I think he has done pretty well to get to four semi-finals, but I think there is a bit of a myth about Pep Guardiola, and I think he will be sorely tested in the Premier League because he's going to be up against a lot of teams uh, which are, shall we say, much better than the opposition in the Bundesliga or in La Liga all put together. I am absolutely 100% behind Manchester City tonight. Uh-huh. Uh, the game's course live here on uh, Talk Sport. It is indeed. We'll be talking to Mark Saggers over there. We will. We? And I want them to get through... Um, and then I want them to win the competition. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah, because I want all English uh, teams in Europe to win the competition. Also, you know how Just I'm in a case great... anybody asks, that includes Liverpool. You know, I'm a great believer in football karma as well. And it'd be interesting, interesting. Karma's going to get you. It wouldn't be interesting if, if Pep Guardiola went to the second club that he goes to, where they've won the Champions League the year before he gets there. <laughs> I'm just about to say that. It'd be amazing. I was about to say that. The, the, the sense of disappointment at uh, Bayern Munich yeah. is, according to my sources in Germany, yeah. where I have a lot of friends, Do you? Um, palpable. Yes. It's palpable in the sense well, that, you know, he, he, he didn't uh, do what we wanted him to yeah. do. And we'll be talking to Ollie Knack a little bit later on in the show as well, so he can give us the view from there. Because Pep Guardiola's been saying, apparently, that he's given his life for Bayern Munich. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I know. In the, uh, in the, in the sort of hours well, you know after, what? The, uh, if somebody, after the loss. If somebody paid me nearly €22 million Euros a year, mm. I would give my life. Would you? Or virtually. But what does he mean by that, though? Well, I think he means that he's drained every possible emotion and uh-huh. strength out of his body. Right. But if that's the case, if that's the case, do you know what he's, I think he's saying? Yeah. Uh, well, no, he's not saying this, but I'm interpreting it. If he's given his life to Bayern Munich and Bayern Munich have not won the Champions League... Yeah. Then, when he gives his maximum, it's not good enough. Is he suggesting it's that maybe not, not everybody has given their life? Is he saying maybe the players haven't been as diligent as he has been over the mm. over the three years? Uh, I mean, a good workman should not blame his tools. No. You know, if a show collapses on us, I never blame you or anything like you that. Always you always do know that. What I mean? No, I don't. Well, if no, the podcast no, doesn't no. come out, you're always blaming me. Well, yeah, but that's a technical thing which you should be on top of. Really? But more to the point, more to the point. Getting back to old Pep Guardiola. Mm. You know, some highly uh, talented Fleet Street journalists, yeah. and I, you know, I read their their tomes all the time. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want to name one in particular because I've read this two or three times. Actually, questioned, you know, Pep Guardiola and his suitability for the Premier League. Yeah. I mean, in he's the, meant to be quite a grumpy guy, so I'm looking forward to his first press conference. In round terms, he was given a great Barcelona team. Well, he helped to create that Barcelona he, I, team. Well, only as a player. No, but as, he was in charge of the B team, wasn't he, before he was given the, the mantle of the top coach. Absolutely true. And he so, was ra- largely responsible for bringing those players through. I agree, but was that not, Mike, because he uh, absolutely perfectly understood the Barcelona production line? Ethic. Yes, the ethic. Yes. Delafou is yeah. a product, product of, that, um, yes, of, yeah. of, of that production line. Mm. So what I'm saying is... He's he, wasted at Everton currently. When, when, he, when he, he's injured now for the rest of the season... Well, the rest of the season, yeah, whatever's left of it, he can't play in. Um, and what I was going to say is, does it mean that when he moved out of that comfort zone, it really was a comfort zone, mm. he found the adjustment to another structure, another mechanic at another major world football club by Munich, um, not to be right for him. Uh-huh. And, and, and you know what I think he's done? Yeah. I think he's run away. Yeah. I think he's run away from Bayern Munich. Mm. Because he should have said, I'm not leaving Bayern Munich till I bring them the Champions League trophy that they crave. Yeah, but he was given a three-year contract. He didn't manage to do it. What makes you think if he stayed another four years that he would actually get any better? But, well, that should have been his choice. Mm. But, and now, what you're saying there is you're insinuating, suggesting, hinting that maybe Bayern Munich didn't want him for another three years. I don't think they did. I well, in that, in that case... And I in think that with case, Mario Ancelotti, they've got more of a chance of winning it, actually. In that case, we're now coming to uh, an amazing conclusion of this discussion where you're actually saying that Pep Guardiola is a reject, right, that Manchester City have picked up because well, he's been... Well, I think that would be going too far. He's been thrown under the bus by no. Bayern Munich. No, I don't think so. I think you he's are tried, saying that. He's tried at Bayern Munich. He's done well, what, what are was, you saying? He's done what was expected of him, which Do is you to know win the Bundesliga. To win a, he might still win the double. He might still win the cup. But what he hasn't been able to do is get him to that next level. Yeah. And unfortunately, Jupp Heynckes was able to do that. And they should mm. never have let him go. They should have kept yeah. him on for another couple of years, I think. Yeah, but absolutely. But I think to say Pep Guardiola is, is a reject is, I think, probably uh, going down No, I didn't the, say the that. I said, I said, are you suggesting no, that? No, I'm not. I'm sure. not. Now, somebody else I need 
to mention to you as well. I don't Sometimes know if you've seen I don't think you know what you're saying. Yeah. Anyway, go on, yeah, well, yeah. Something that I said the other day, which you disputed, Moussa Dembele, uh, who you claim did not in any way uh, interfere with the eye of Diego Costa, yes. uh, could now be facing a 10-match ban, yes. because they're looking at that incident as if it was a Luis Suarez biting scenario. Got anything to say about that? Well, I still don't think his eye was gouged. Really? No, I think his cheekbone was assailed, but I don't think his, his, uh, his eye socket right. was interfered So they'll with. be wrong to punish him in that way, then? I think that's a massive overreaction, I really do. Really? Football's a physical game, and if guys lash out at each other and all that kind of stuff, you well, know... after the game's finished? Well, I'm... We already had this argument. You've uh, already lost it. Why don't you just admit no, you're no, wrong? No, no, no. No, emotions are so just high that Just admit you're wrong. I'm not admitting I'm wrong. I'm saying there is an argument on either side there. I prefer my argument to yours. Right, OK. Simple as that. OK, Steve says this. Porky seems to think the primary need of chimps is bananas. It's like he lives in a cartoon. Couldn't have put it better myself. OK, so what, so what do chimps eat? This is talk sport. We haven't got time for that. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up tonight. It's live Talk Sport commentary, of course, of Real Madrid against Manchester City, the second leg of the semi final of the Champions League. Currently nil nil. Uh, we're all hoping Manchester City can get through to their first ever final. And we're going to talk to Mark Saggers, who's over in Madrid for us very, very shortly. But you know, Porky, the last time we spoke to Mark Saggers, yes. uh, when he was in a foreign a city, yes. uh, he wasn't in a very good mood. Have a listen to this. He was absolutely magnificent. Right. His, or- his oratory. And none of this matters, though. None of this matters. No, but what I'm none saying is. It matter if you're on a level. Yeah, 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 yeah. You broke yeah, another cup another for heaven's sake, gone. Mark. <laughs> What was wrong with it? That was Mark throwing cups around after England didn't get the uh, the World Cup in uh, 2018 That's which went right, to Russia, yeah. or indeed to, uh, to 2022 in That's Qatar. Right. Mark, a very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, guys. How right was I, though, after all of the preceding shenanigans with uh, FIFA and everything since? Well, Absolutely I mean, right. that, that expression you use, level playing field, probably one of the most accurate descriptions of a, you know, a, a gerrymandering yeah. situation I've ever heard of. Yeah, exactly. And well it was, done. I was just across at the time. I'm not, I'm, I'm really relaxed today. I'm sitting at the moment just uh, on a street corner um, opposite the Santiago Bernabeu. Mm. It, uh, a light, fluffy, cloudy, clouded sky with uh, temperatures in the mid twenties, and it'll be hot tonight for Manchester City. It certainly, certainly will, be. will be. We're told there could be as many as ten thousand City fans uh, in Madrid for this one. Mark, have you have you seen any sign of anyone? Yeah, there are there are lots of them here already, and uh, of course, it's such a wonderful city. It has a, 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 a restaurant or a bar for every one hundred and ninety-seven residents. So there's. So many that's great. That's great. That's from. great news for Porky. Something that sort of uh, that, that sort of breaks down because I mean, Excuse you know, he me. doesn't like to yeah. go more than about fifty yards without stopping in for a glass of sangria. <laughs> well, I, I don't drink sangria, and I don't like the tapas bars either. In fact, there's a report out in England today, Mark, saying that Spanish restaurants have told their chefs to curb the amount of shouting they do at the customers if the customers don't like the food. But that's for another day. What are you expecting in this game tonight, um, uh, Mark? And, and bear in mind, bear in mind that what a lot of people are talking about in this country is a pep. Guardiola, who's obviously their next manager, four consecutive yeah. years of failing to get to the final of the Champions League, let alone win it. Well, exactly. And the problem that uh, Manchester City have is a different one here tonight. Um, first of all, on the pep, Manchester City have still got to qualify, if you if you think about it, if they, if they get knocked out of this competition before they win it for the Champions League next season. And Pep could be arriving with no Champions League at Manchester City. Indeed. Particularly with the likes of West Ham United, with this opportunity, should Arsenal beat Manchester City and West Ham win all their games, mm. then they will qualify. Mm. Um, look, tonight, Cristiano. We're not allowed to call him Cristiano Ronaldo out here in Madrid. They only call him Cristiano. Yeah, really? Uh, he's, yeah. He's, yeah, he's back tonight. He's mm-hmm. scored more goals than any other Real Madrid player for them. Uh, he's magnificent. He's, he'll be firing on all cylinders, and he is going to be a handful. Mm. Uh, but I, I, I really do believe that, um, just quickly on the team, Fernando... And uh, Fernandino for Manchester City uh, in that midfield, along with Yaya Torre possibly playing as a fo- uh, as a number ten tonight or whatever. You know, um, they they're strong, and mm. I and I felt that that is the way to get at Real Madrid. But it is going to be so tough mm. tonight, and um, you know they've got to take their chances. They've got to hope that the, the back that they're as solid as they can be with Joe Hart having a good game tonight, or else uh, they could find pretty early on that they're in a little bit of trouble. Does it matter, do you think, uh, Mark, that they had such a poor result of the weekend? We know that there was a different team and we know that, you know, some no. of the players from there was, uh, will be playing tonight. But, I mean, it's never, I don't think it's a great thing to go into a massive game like this with, with such a sort of humiliating loss behind you. Yeah, but what they've done, they've done this on a regular basis in this competition this year. Pellegrini mm. actually said the, 
the quarter-final against Paris Saint-Germain was the psychological change for this uh, competition. Um, they are going to have great support in the Bernabeu tonight, but it is an intense stadium, high-sided, uh, wonderful atmosphere. I think um, more than that, though, it's, it's the, the all-round quality. They, there's no silver for them tonight. There's no Zabaleta. He's got a calf injury. Um, and I think that they will miss both of those players. But they're, they're putting the best side out they possibly can. But I, I still feel Real Madrid could be too, uh, too good for them. The thing is, if they can score, mm. if they can get a goal, that is going to be the difference. I think for Manchester City to come away with victory, they've got to score twice tonight. But yeah. there is a much more pressing thing that we should be talking about, finally, as far as I'm concerned. I am really worried about the tailors and designers of the coaches and managers these days. We've seen it already. Uh, Pochettino the other night, he nearly had his uh, Armani jacket split <laughs> uh, in all the fracas on the touchline. Yeah. There was the problem with uh, the Chelsea manager Gus Hiddink as well. Mm. Uh, when he was bundled over sort of onto a seat, he could have ripped that designer jacket. Zidane... He Zidane himself, ripped his trousers, didn't he? He did not once, trousers. Yeah. but twice. Well, 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 Mark, I'm so... Who's he, who's he using as a tailor at the moment? I'm so glad you've raised this because, of course, another Spaniard, and that's the manager of my club, uh, Everton, Roberto Martinez, he wears tan shoes. I've been complaining about it all season. <laughs> what, what, what football manager wears tan shoes? Just getting back to the football for a minute, Mark, do you know what I think's yeah, going to happen okay. tonight? I'm delighted uh, for Manchester City that Ronaldo's playing because I don't believe he's 100% fit. And a non-100% okay. fit Ronaldo can be a very petulant player on the pitch. It's almost like you know, everybody's got to drop the ball on his toe tonight because he, he, he's not fully fit. Aguero, if I'm... Aguero? If, Aguero, if, uh, if recollection gets to me, is coming back to the city where he made his name with Atletico, OK? He's got a very, very poor record in European games. I think he's only ever scored two in, um, in uh, European ties. Can okay. you believe he's, only, he's had no shots on target in the last four European games? But exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, isn't the stage set for Aguero to actually be the star of the game tonight in the city that spawned his greatness and led to his £38 million transfer to Manchester City. Wouldn't that... I mean, we have already had a fairy tale this season. There's no reason why we can't have another one tonight. Look, it would be absolutely wonderful for the Premier League and for Manchester City and for their fans and for all of us if Manchester City can make it to the San Siro in Milan on the 28th of May because Aguero has finished off Ronaldo and Real Madrid. Um, I think, you know, they've got to be at their very best to do it. I see no reason why they can't. They're all big players. They've all played in big competitions. They all know exactly what to do. I think we're in for a fantastic match. If it's half as good as the action last night yep. in the other one from the Allianz uh, in Munich, then we're in for an, a, a real treat tonight. Totally but, agree. Uh, I think it's a mighty tough game. It is. And, and also, one of the tougher uh, assignments for you, Mark, presumably for uh, the rest of the afternoon, is to avoid the moose, who's also out there for talking. Oh, he's sport. not, is he? Um, well, and I, you don't want to be understand. hanging around with him for hours, do you? Under, well, actually, I'm sitting next to him as we speak. because oh, I understand dear. He's, he's on with you later. He's been... He's actually... He could do with a little bit of uh, physio and treatment because... <laughs> Why, because lame. of eight he's plates of lame. tapas? No, he's gone lame. He's gone, gone lame. lame. Well, that's got, he's got too much body weight. Tell him that his knees are going to buckle under the weight of his gross, uh, rather revolting yeah. well, we've, body. We've, we've, we've his ankles will be going him. soon as well. He's, I bet he's got fluid in his ankles. Check his ankles, yeah. see if he's got well, fluid in ankles. him. It is his, his ankle that's gone, and, and by the way he's been trying to cross the road, jaywalking, he may well not even be here. To talk well, to you God, God, God help any vehicle that hits the moose because it'll be the vehicle that needs a repair job, not uh, not old uh, Grosso. El Grosso. <laughs> well, well have, a, have a tremendous uh, afternoon, Mark. We'll all be listening, of course, tonight uh, yeah, from 7 o'clock. Uh, Mark Saggers yeah, in Sam Madrid. Matter face, Ray Wilkins are alongside me. All the action until it finishes. What a game. Brilliant, sir. Great stuff. The Champions League tonight live mm. on Talk Sport. Uh, it's a 7.45 kickoff, but you'll hear everything uh, as it's uh, uh, going underway uh, from 7 o'clock with Mark Sagers on kickoff. We've got lots more uh, coming up. It's Porky Vision, of course, today, yeah. uh, where you do your TV review. Yes. I don't know what you're preparing to talk about. We may or may I, not want to I'm going to surprise you today oh, with hey. that one. I'm going to surprise you. Well, you're going to actually watch something, you mean? I'm not going to respond to that. This is Talk Sport. This afternoon, thanks to Papa John's, you have not one but three chances to win a slice of £300 cash. Every hour, we will be asking million-themed questions. All you need to do is text the correct answer, and you could win £100 in cash. That's right. Now, today's question is this. In 1988, Curtis Strange became the first to earn $1 million 
in official earnings in a single year, or a single season, I should say, in which sport? 88, Curtis Strange, single year season, million pounds earnings, which sport, please? Was it golf or was it cricket? Indeed. Text sport followed by A for golf uh, or followed by B for cricket to 81089 before 1.45. That's just 10 minutes away. Text costs 50 pence and standard network charges apply. Visit talksport.com for our full terms and conditions. Jacob's Millions on TalkSport with Papa John's. Sign up now for your chance to win 1 million euros at www.amillionfans.com. 18 plus, terms and conditions apply. Now, there's an awful lot of tweets coming in on yep. various subjects. One well, from uh, Daniel, who says, MG, who's Mario Ancelotti? I think you meant Carlo. Did I say Mario Ancelotti? Uh, I didn't notice. Oh, I must have been yeah, thinking yeah. of Mario yeah. Andretti. Anyway, yep. I apologise if I said mm-hmm. Mario. Of course I meant uh, Carlo Ancelotti. Yes. Uh, here's one from Barry. He says, in his book, I Am Zlatan, the author claims Guardiola is a weak man and scared of personal confrontation. Is that right? That's yes. Ibrahimovic, isn't it? Uh, yes, it the, is. I think he's the most successful footballer playing today. Do you think? Yeah, I think he's won a, I think he's won a title in every country he's ever played I think in. that's true. Yeah, yeah. it'd be great if he yeah. The Premier League. It Jim would. says, just for Porky's info, apes in ca- captivity eat high protein mush and melons much, much more than bananas. Yeah. Uh, this isn't cartoon land. And Ray says, it's tough to win a Champions mm-hmm. League. Pep's already won two and is still young. Yes. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson only won two in 20 plus years. Is yeah. he a failure? Yes. Is he a failure? What, Sir Alex Ferguson? Yes. I wouldn't have thought so. No, I wouldn't have thought so either. But what but he's saying, his point is, is that Pep Guardiola has already won two Champions Leagues. Yes. He's a lot younger than Sir Alex. Yeah, but who did he win them with? He won them with Barcelona. Both of them, of yeah. course he did. And, and with probably the greatest ever club side anybody's ever seen. Do you yeah. remember the final at Wembley yeah, when they demolished Manchester United? That, yeah, but I don't think it's fair to say that he had nothing to do with that. Well, my view is this. Had um, Jose Mourinho had control of Bayern Munich for the last three years, yeah. which is exactly the same amount of time he had control of Inter Milan, mm. I think they'd have won a Champions League. Well, you see, they, they, he didn't win with Real Madrid, did he? Well, he got very close, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he didn't win, that's the point. I yeah. mean, and and you, are, you have to ask the question about Jose Mourinho, given what happened at Real Madrid and what happened at Chelsea. Yeah, the, you so know, it's, it's three years' tenure for him in any club, yeah. too long. Sorry, no, the point I was trying to make there, Mike, was that what I'm saying is Jose Mourinho, yes, he didn't win it at Real Madrid, but by winning it into Milan, he won it with more than one club. Yeah. And I think winning with more than one club is mm. the mark of a great, truly great manager. True, very possibly so. We yeah. shall find out if he comes to Manchester United Indeed. or wherever he goes next. He may yeah. go to PSG, who knows? Rob says this... Mm. Bele raised his open hand to the face of an opponent. He means to do harm, whether contacts his eyes or not. Yeah, but it's not a ten-match ban, is it? He deserves a long ban. Yeah, but it's not a ten-match ban. I it's also know, been pointed out that if it happens in rugby, it's a, it's a ten-week ban in rugby if you do it in rugby. Yeah, so. but I mean the trouble with rugby is they present themselves as the uh, the sport of gentlemen, and when they find out that these people go around gouging each other's eyes out and scraping their boots across the face of their opponents, it's absolutely no wonder mm. they decide, oh, harsh penalties, just to try and um, cover them up. Now, not that I wish to go back over earlier okay. shows that we've done in the week, but I have to read this one out from Ryan, right. uh, who says, are you sure this mountain climber will want to talk about mountains? Hashtag <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jay Rayner. That is a little bit harsh, It isn't is. It? A little bit yeah. harsh. He's still getting a kicky on Twitter. Yeah. Abs- I, three days later. He, he is, actually. And, um, I'm starting to feel a bit sorry for him. Now. I tell you what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to reading his column in, um, in the Observer newspaper hey. this weekend. Now, um, well, you think I, he might get a few extra readers, you mean? No, well, he may be get a few extra readers, but I wonder whether they make any reference mm. to the fact that he thinks we're a couple of numbskulls or I something doubt like it. that. I doubt now, it. what I was going to say, Mike, was I can't remember if his column is in the main body of the paper or in the magazine. Me neither. So I don't know whether he has ten days to write it or, or, or no two idea. days. or I don't, No, nobody knows. No idea. Nobody knows. Don't um, care, really. Listen, did you ever um, get tuned into Frank Zappa? Uh, yes, I used to like Frank Zappa really? quite a lot, actually. Yeah, I've got a couple of his albums. Um, I never, I never got turned on to him because I, I didn't like the look of him, and um, I, you know, to me, he looked so bizarre and so oh, yeah. weird. But do you know that um, there's there's some dispute going on about his fort? He's dead, presumably, is he? About Frank Zappa? Yeah, no, he's not. You sure? I don't think so. No, there's a huge row going on within, within his family as to who's going to get his fortune well, when he does did, die. Maybe then. he did die. I'm just did so used die? to you killing people off when they're actually still alive. Do you know how many albums Frank Zappa released? Loads. Fifty 60. odd. No, sixty. Say. See, I said 60. fifty odd. That was quite close. That was wasn't quite it? close. I've yeah. got one called Shake Your Booty. Still okay. Have it. All right. Well, he, anyway, he released all these albums, and as a result of the number, really, not the fact that they had massive sales, he's got a huge fortune. And his and his son is called Dweezil Zappa. Yeah. There's right? Moon Unit as well, isn't there? What? Moon Unit is one of his other kids. Let me have a look here. Moon, Moon Unit. Unit. Yeah. It's a mad name. I isn't think it? that was the name he gave his daughter, but she may have changed it, but that was the name she was given at birth. Uh, uh, hang on. Dweezil Zappa. Yeah. Uh, Armet and Diva, the youngest of Frank's four children, with Gail Slopeman. That must have been his wife, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the point is, uh, these two brothers, 
um, fallen out with each other. Right. Each wants to inherit their father's legacy. Uh-huh. But now there's a dispute well, over... Well, don't they want us to perform his music as well? That's yeah, what that's right. About. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, how do you explain it properly, then? Well, hang on. What, what are you telling me the story I'm telling you for? Well, because you're I not telling you it right. Frank Zappa. I am well, telling it you're right. You're not telling it right. The, the dispute is about his material, is it not? What? The, yeah, it the is. The dispute is about his material. Yeah, but, but the... Well, you didn't say that. Yeah, but the strangest thing is, it is a dispute about his material between his children. Yes. I mean, why don't the two sons get up on the stage together and try and, you know, pay tribute to the father by playing together? Well, because you see, that's sibling rivalry. He that's died sibling... in uh, 1993. Well, you just said he was still alive. No, I said I thought he might be, because <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sure. Yeah. No, because I'm so sure of you he, killing people he, off before he, their time. So he died, well, he died over such 20 a long, years ago. Yeah, such a long yeah, time yeah, ago, yeah. I'd forgotten. Yeah, what yeah he well, was say, But he was a very talented man, tremendous. I'm not sure he was. I thought, mm. he, I thought he just sort of, you know, clanged around on the guitar Moon Unit has shortened her name to Moon, apparently. Oh, yeah, I don't know anything about it. Anyway. Look, um, what anyway, I mean, what's the point of the story? Well, the point of the story is the point of the story is, mm. and the same thing is happening now with Prince. Yeah. The real venom and bitterness within families erupts yeah. once the source of the original fortune in the family. Do you think that'll happen expires. when you die? I think it could. Well, you haven't got any family. No, but I'm going to leave it to a number of people who I... Uh, who I feel uh, deserve really. A, uh, a benefit in life or so a bonus in life. I, I can look forward to a large uh, windfall then when you uh, finally pop your clogs, can I? You're getting zip, <laughs> right? You know what zip is? It's my own expression well, for nothing. I thought you might want to pay me back the million dollars you cost me in that apartment that you left in you New York. Keep, you keep banging on about that. You, yeah. Honestly, I mean... It's a these, million bucks. Just leave what, me a million dollars. One of these days, fine. I'm uh, I'm, I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I'm talking about song, singing, by the way. You know the Eurovision Song Contest comes Well, never up. mind about that, because I've got the personal listography in front of me in the new day. Oh, right. Like, it like, says, this, yeah. uh, list your three favourite songs. Right. So please try not to make them all by the Beatles and tell me what your three favourite songs are. OK. Go on, number one. Strawberry Fields Forever. OK. By the Beatles. Well, yes, and written by John Lennon. Yeah, yes. not by Elton John. No, not by Elton John. No, uh-huh. wouldn't, you wouldn't get an Elton John song out of me as a favourite song. Really? I think most of them are trash. Well, you don't like Rocket Man. Not really. Really? I don't like. I don't like the piano influence. Well, I haven't asked you your influence. three most horrible songs. What's your yeah. second one then? My second one yeah. is um, "There's Something in the Air" by Thunderclap Newman. Something in the air by yeah, with a one-hit wonder. Yeah, it was a one-hit wonder, yeah. but it was a brilliant song. Are you sure that's the title? Something in the air yeah. is the title. OK. Yeah. All right. OK. And what's your final one? My final one is Baker Street by Jerry Rafferty. Oh, yeah. Which I could listen to over and over and over again, mostly... Have you got his greatest hits? Mo- mo- no, I haven't, actually. I didn't know he had any other songs apart from Baker Street. No, he has. Has he? Yeah, well, uh, quite... quite uh, but mostly, um, mostly prodigious for... Prodigious writer. Mostly for the power of the saxophone solo, uh-huh. which was simply brilliant. I yeah. mean, that made it, didn't it? That, that was that well, was all about. it's certainly hard Do you know the name the of the guy who it. played that? I can't remember his name. No, I can't either. But, Why um, are you asking me that? Well, because I thought you might know. <laughs> because, um, well, I'm, well, well, you did once say that Mike mm. Oldfield had... Uh, Drunk himself to death in a pizza. <laughs> and when it turned out, you were confusing him with Jerry Rafferty. Well, actually, yeah, that was, a, that was a bit of a. But I'll tell you what, this mm. is an interesting thing. Yeah. If you, time, if you and I here, let me tell you how the world would go. Yeah. So you and I have got an individual fortune of fifty million each yeah. because we've been very successful in something. You know, right. like, you know, we, we've been rock musicians, or you know, not. Do you fantasise about this kind of thing a lot? No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, if you could get up every day, mm. and you had fifty million quid in the bank. You would literally be dead mm. within three months. Me? Yes. Why do you say that? Because you have no sense of responsibility whatsoever. <laughs> you are you basically are an idle man oh. who would like the world to owe him a living, but has to not true. who has to drag himself out of bed not occasionally. True. I have to, responsibilities to that you know nothing about. Oh yes, I do. I know, you know about nothing about my responsibilities. I know, I've got no, people to look after, I've got where, children where, to where, pay for, yeah, 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 you know, holidays yeah, to know. organise. And that's the only thing that you do it for. It's the only thing you do it for. But I do it for the self respect mm. of being a working man. Really? Right? And if I had £100 million, pounds, yeah. I would still get up every day at half past four in the morning. Well, that's because you've got nothing else to and, do. And pla- no, no, no. Got no life. And plan something to do that day to change the yeah. world. Right. Even if it's only my own world. Really? But I would change some world. Would you? Or part of it. What did you do this morning? What did you do this morning? Yeah. Oh, you unbelievable. not believe it. We haven't got time for a no. long explanation. It's a one-word answer. Two pigeons crashed onto my new um, bird pond oh, yeah. and smashed it. Really? Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous. What a ridiculous story. This is Talk Sport. This is 
Talk Sport. We are of the two mics. Porky Vision coming up a little bit later on in the show. Of course, we'll be going back to Madrid before the end of the show as well to uh, get some more uh, atmosphere ahead of that live Talk Sport commentary game tonight. Very important game, of course, the uh, semi final, second leg of the Champions League, Real Madrid against Manchester City. Right now, though, yeah. uh, we're going to talk about the great outdoors because uh, there seems to be a bit of a problem with some of the mountains and some of the hills yeah, in indeed. this country, Porky. Yeah. Would you like to explain it to us? Well, um, so Chris Bonington, of course, is a legendary mountaineer. Yeah. He's, uh, he's actually looking at a little lower in height of mountains and the Himalayas where he is of course conquered every every possible summit and, mm. and around the world. He's talking about the Three Peaks Challenge in this country and we're talking about you know Wales highest mountain um, talking about Scotland's highest mountain, England's highest mountain and when he gets up there he finds that the pathways are getting worn down. Now right. I know a bit about this being brought up in Chester we used to go to Snowdonia Did you? And, it's a um, long walk isn't it? Well, we'd take the car to oh, the right. Snowdonia National Park, you yeah. idiot, and then walk up the mountain, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the problem is, it's it's too popular these days. We've all seen the pictures, haven't we, of base camp uh, on Everest mm. being, you know, piled with litter and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Right. Well, on a much smaller scale, it's coming here. But the real danger, apparently, is not, um, you know, rubbish and, 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 and trash and litter being left all over the place. It's the number of people now who are doing it are wearing away... The, you know, the very fabric of the mm. mountain. Well, luckily, we've got a mountaineer to talk Excellent. to. Mr Doug Scott, CBE, who's been on the odd expedition with uh, with Sir Chris Bollington, uh, notably up Mount Everest, amongst others. Doug, a very good afternoon to you. Hello there, Mike. Thanks Hi. very much indeed for, mm. for joining us. Is, is, is this real? I mean, are ramblers getting as high as, as, as some of these mountain peaks and, and, and ruining them? Is that the problem? Oh, well, they are getting a bit worn out. Perhaps we shouldn't be talking about them, then people wouldn't go. Well, <laughs> n- no, you're absolutely right. People will go more and more. But, I mean, you know, who, was, who made the famous expression, why do you climb mountains? Because they're there. Well, why do ramblers go rambling up uh, mountains in this country? It's because they're there. You can't really stop people doing this. Why don't we just get somebody to invest some money in making sure that the pathways aren't getting worn out? Well, it's an um, it's, it's, uh, interesting job, fixing the footpaths. Um, for instance, when you've got people like me with two new hips, yeah, no, one new hip, uh, two new knees, one new hip, and a fused ankle, right? Uh, when you're coming back downhill, it can be a bit tricky. Mm. And what you don't want is a, are a lot of steps, artificial sort of steps, all the way down the mountainside. Yeah. Uh, so because what you tend to do is avoid them and go on the uh, you know, the grass and the soil to the side. Mm. Which is not what the f- the people who are repairing the footpaths really want. Sure, so but is, is there has there been a massive outbreak, uh, Doug? Of, of, of... they really fit into the landscape and mm. they're seated well, mm. you know, like the old sort of uh, pack horse ways that go sure. to the Peak District and that sort of thing. Sure. But, has, but has there been a massive outbreak of activity up these mountains? I mean, we've seen a lot more cyclists since the Olympics in 2012. Mm. Um, have, have, we, have we seen more climbers out there for some reason? What's what's inspiring them? Well, there's about uh, five million people in, the, in this country that have a pair of boots rucksack that they use at least once a month. Right. And uh, so, yes, it's, it's only just a trick going out, just going out for a uh, you know, two or three hour walk, even with a dog, just down the road in the, in the woods and across the fields, that's pretty good. But to go up into the Lake District here, say, or you know, on Snowdonia, which we were talking about, I mean, it does lift your spirits just nope. by being out there and. Yeah. Especially if you get to the summit of something like Snowden, or perhaps not Snowden with a cap and everything, but other yeah. other peaks. Yeah. Um, you know, it, uh, you come back tired but uh, energised with a glow on, and so you, there's no wonder so many people do it. Sure, Doug. If you don't mind me saying, uh, and with the greatest respect, these walks are not designed for people who are knackered like you. If you don't, you know, if you see what I mean, <laughs> you know. With your, well, no, no, He's no, climbed no. Everest, this guy. I, I, I know he has, and I have immense respect for you, but I'm saying at a certain time, you know, mm. people have to give up these, you know, hugely physical activities. Why? Well, because if your knees have gone and your ankles gone and one of your hips has gone, it, it, uh, what I'm saying is, Doug, the, the paths are designed for really able-bodied, younger, fitter people who want to take on the challenge, not yourself who's done it all. No, I should back up, really. Yeah. Well, no, That's no, an outrageous no, thing to say. No, no, it's not. It's but not. Surely, surely, more importantly, though, Doug, as well, is that if you are going out into the great outdoors and you do scramble up Snowden or you go up uh, mm. something called Ringing Roger in the Peak District, right? I mean, the worst thing you want to find at the top of that mountain is about 50 other people who've all just got there ahead of you. Indeed. Mm, well, it's uh, the one time you could always go out in the week and have it to yourself, but now there's so many people, uh, you know, retired and retiring early or just off work, it's uh, 
There's, there's very little time when the mountains aren't yeah. quite full. I, 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 blame the, I blame the fitness epidemic. There's far too many people who now think that they have to do something like that to keep fit. Therefore, these, 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 these sort there of... Are places s- there. These, no, these yeah. pathways are now completely congested. Mm. Right? Can, you, can you tell me, Doug, are there sort of um, gratuity boxes on these uh, paths? You know, I mean, gratuity boxes. Well, Sir Chris Bonington is saying the public should make a, a contribution to the repair of them. Mm. So when you get to the top of the mountain, is there a box there where you can stick, you know, 10 quid in or 20 quid or something like that in order to well, try somebody and... somebody would nick it, wouldn't they? No, well, that's what I'm saying. The spirit, of, the spirit of rambling, climbing, mountaineering, whatever you call it, that, can't that be done? No, it's better this crowdfunding way. Just send your cheque-in or um, go online and, and send it via the BMC. Oh, that's a good idea, I see. And then who, who takes care of that money and who, and who then uh, gets busy repairing things? Well... Um, most of the most of the people you, you see repairing footpaths, if you are on the hillside and see it happening, yeah. are volunteers. I see. Uh, they're usually organised by um, some uh, paid guy, yeah. environmentalist, mm-hmm. well qualified. But uh, it, it is quite an art, as I was trying to say earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To see the footpath into the hillside so it looks natural. It looks like it's always been there. Mm-hmm. No, I see what you mean. Yeah. Do, do they have banisters? Do they have banisters and? It looks like a conveyor belt going up the hillside. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah, like yeah. ropes and all Well, no, that. you don't want banisters. Well, I've got a tweet here, uh, mm. Doug, which uh, from Danny. He says, mm. the latest trend is hiking your mountain bike up snowed and then riding back down. Lots of riders are doing this. What? It's a great experience. So so you might actually uh, run the risk of being run over as well by a biker. There is that. A bit like snowboarding on the ski slopes. Yeah, right. Is that right? Good, that that's terrible. terrible. That's well, shocking. listen, Doug, thank you very Doug, much thank indeed. Thank you very if much indeed. And please, to, uh, please, please, do not take offence to the fact that I said, Doug, that uh, you're knackered. I mean, that's just a... a that was an outrageous no, thing No, no, it's just, it's just a, um, a physical observation. Man's but been I mean, honoured by the Queen, you know. I know, and I have immense respect for the man. He's conquered the world, and I very, just want to... Very, very interesting. A bit like being with Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's very kind of you, thank you. We are teenagers. We are serious broad. We are serious broad. We are very serious. Doug, thank you very much indeed. Of course, if you want to try and find find out how to Ooh. help the crowdfunding of these places and go to the British Mountaineering Council's website uh, and you can uh, send them some money if you wish. Excellent. Uh, coming up, though, uh, we've got lots more in the next hour. Ollie Nat's going to join us to tell us what Pep Guardiola's feeling like uh, today after being knocked out of the Champions League again. Uh, and, of course, it's Porky Vision coming up as well. Talk sport, we are the two mics. Ollie Nack's coming up in this hour to tell us what the Germans are saying about Pep Guardiola and his time at Bayern Munich. Of yep. course, uh, he's on his way to Manchester City. I mean, he's probably hoping against hope that they don't win the Champions League. He's probably rooting for Real Madrid. Well, surely he uh, can't the team be, can he? he? used to hate when he was in he Spain. He can't be. I mean, he's going there as a new boss. Surely he wants to walk into the, um, the foyer at Manchester City and see mm. the Champions League trophy sitting there, doesn't he? Well, I suppose he certainly wants them to be playing in the Champions yes. League. And Mark Sagers actually raised an interesting point, didn't he? Because, I mean, yeah. it's still possible they that Manchester City could drop out of the top well, four. There you go. If Mr. Pelle Greeny, particularly if they win tonight mm, right, mm. Uh, and they go through, well, what will that mean for the uh, uh, the, the situation regarding their, 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 their remaining league fixtures? Because, I mean, he might not want players to get injured. He yeah. might sort of suddenly find himself totally agree. not getting very many more points and getting caught up by Manchester United. I totally agree. I mean, it'll be the biggest game the club's ever played. It'll be the biggest game of uh, Mr Pellegrini's life. It'll be the biggest mm. game of all the players' lives. It, 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 it'll be a conundrum. Mm. Uh, no, not a conundrum. It'll be a... Um, what will it be? Well, it might not be a conundrum. No, it won't be a conundrum. What will it uh, be? It'll be a what, what did I they say? Know. I mean, it's very hard sometimes for yeah. me to work out what exactly is no, going no, on between no, no, your no. ears. No, hang on, hang on. What did um, what did Churchill say of communism? A riddle wrapped up in a conundrum, in an enigma, or rolled into it? an enigma. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, look, the point I of the story I still don't know what on, what on earth you're talking about. No, well, don't worry, because I, I do, and so do our millions of listeners. Mm. Uh, now, listen, uh, I want people to know that I wasn't in any way um, intending to um, be rude to Doug Scott, CBE. CBE. A mountaineering legend who's climbed mountains think you were. to Chris Bonington. But I did ask him the question as to why, when he's got two replacement knees, one replacement hip and a fused ankle, mm. he still because spends his time walking up and down things like Snowden. Because well, he's a and, mountaineer. Uh, and uh, the Brecon Beacons yeah. and, and Scaffold Pike. Well, I mean, you go wandering about on the South Downs or wherever it is, the Epsom Downs, right? And uh, you've got South technically Downs, only a third Downs. of your heart that works. You've got, well, um, you know, what, what you might describe as not exactly the world's greatest physical shape. Well, it's funny you should say that, but Pete has got right into the mode of things. I think he must be referring to the chap we spoke to the other day, the um, food critic. Oh, yeah. yeah. And he says, outrageous what Porky said to the mountaineer Doug. He should stick to abusing food critics. <laughs> Sorry about well, that. Uh, people have found it slightly oh. ironic mm. as well. Yeah. 
Yeah. You've suggested that somebody's old and knackered. Uh, Alan says, when Porky tells you you're knackered, there's real cause for concern. Yeah, and, and Manny is essentially an offensive one here. He says, uh, Porky, the only climbing you do, pal, is out of the gutter after a long night of bladderation That's like true, a drunken true. old tramp. Freddie says, That's I, very uh, nice, I, isn't it? I think Plank Face Perry should make a hefty donation to the BMC after abusing old Doug. Sort it out with money again. Well, I might do. I might do. I like, I like um, contributing to things that keep our country great, mm. and I think walking up and down mountains is a great thing to do. I've never done it myself. Right. There's, um, I'll tell you where I'm going well, next. Well, you said up. you used to go up and down Snowden when you were a kid. Yes, I did, yes, yes. Well, so you have done it. A bit of it, a bit yeah. of it, yeah. My dad used to take uh, uh, sort of expeditions off to, uh, to the Cairn Gorms. He used to walk across the really? Cairn Gorms on a, on a night, on, on a sort of a yearly basis, yeah. Took my mother with him once, took my sister, yeah, yeah. asked me to go with him once, yeah. and I just I turned him down. Why? Well, I didn't fancy the idea. I don't yeah, like, see, one, that's I don't what like I said. Sleeping. That's what I said. Well, you I just want a comfort a, zone, you do. Well, I don't want to sleep in a tent. Wouldn't uh, you have slept you know, for... in a... In a um... What they call in the baron? The bothies. The bothies. Sometimes he would stay in bothies, but other times he would Staying stay in tents. He in came back once, right? He came back once, mm. and his face was literally the size of a football. Oh right, right. Been on the whiskey. Of, well, no, there's an awful lot of midges up there. Oh right. And what would okay, happen yeah. is he'd come out yeah. of the tent in the morning, yeah. and he'd be literally, you know, just attacked by the swarm of midges. I know what you mean. And it was horrendous. Actually, I didn't tell you. You know, I went to the enchanted forest at the at the weekend down oh, in Kent. Why are you singing? Enchanted forest. No, it's what enchanted evening actually. Yeah, go on. Um, and as we there was a little boat that took you from one part of it down to the next bit. You know, what, the Enchanted just, Forest? Yeah, Enchanted well, Forest. has got a lake in it? Yeah, well, I had a river, a canal, actually. Oh, that's it's, it's, Where it's is this? It's a stately home, it's just south of Tunbridge Wells. Oh, OK. It was used, actually, as the uh, location for the um, uh, Pride and Prejudice movie. Was it? Kira Knightley, yeah. Ooh. So it's quite a sort of a beautiful okay. place. She's, she's great. She is, yeah. Love her. A lot of people do. And yeah. uh, right as we were about to leave in the boat, Ooh. we noticed there was there was a, a sign that said, you know, bees. Yes. Uh, you know, they had beehives there, right? And the guy told yeah. us that they'd had to move the beehive away from the uh, the site of the start of the boat because apparently sometime last year the bees all decided to swarm on everyone who was sitting in the boat. Oh, dear. The people were jumping into the water trying to escape. I'm not surprised. That yeah. would be terrible. It was. A, whenever I go down to the south coast, mm. I'm passing from the north downs to the south downs, yes. I pass a sign which says Butzer Hill. Butzer Hill, yeah, where's not, that? Not Buster Hill, Butzer, B-U-T-S-E-R. Mm. OK. And you can see the people streaming up it, uh, and it is like base camp on mm. the Eiger, you know what I mean? But that's you, the whole point, isn't the yeah. point, isn't the point? I mean, my dad used to mm. say when he went to the King Girls, mm. he would not see another soul, yeah, well, literally, for an entire week. Well, that's, that's, surely that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, that is the point. I mean, I mean, if I was going to do that, you know, I'd do... I'd, uh, I'd I'd get some sort of a backpack, but not a rucksack, you mm. know. I don't want to become a rucksacker. Well, all these rucksackers and perhaps are the ones that you see on the trains maybe, heading maybe. off to climb mountains. I doubt it. And mm. I'd go wandering around like Exmoor, mm. you know what I mean? Right. Uh, so you don't see a soul anywhere. Yeah, but uh, even Exmoor's pretty busy now, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, that's why I'm... You can drive through it. Yeah, but that's why I'm retiring to Northumberland. Are you? There are stretches. When are you retiring? Of, uh, well, I Somebody haven't reminded me. There are there are stretches of uh, beach in Northumberland which are four miles long, mm. and apparently, to according to my friends up there, at this time of the year, may, maybe a little bit earlier, and maybe October, November, you can walk the four miles with your dog and never see another human being. Have How about got, that? Are you going to get a dog as well? I'm going to get a dog. Yeah, I'm going to get a Labrador. Yeah, quite right. But too. I'm going to keep the Labrador fit and healthy because mm. there's loads of stories around at the moment about uh, Labradors being the fattest. Uh, pets well, that's you can because get. that's because they don't stop eating unless you unless you if you if you allow a Labrador to just eat all the time, that's yes. what they do. They eat themselves to death. Yeah, they would. Yeah, I know. They they Very greedy. Uh, I mean, uh, funny enough, um, uh, my old colleague here, Sean, who used to have uh, Chip, who was mm. the dog. Yes, I, I I made a terrible mistake because I loved Chip. It was a beautiful Labrador dog. But I didn't realise that Labradors adore people who give them food mm. and don't really care about anything else. Right. So the minute was I this started, not the dog that was ill over Lord Sugar, or was that? Yes, yeah, so over Lord Sugar's shoes, I'm yeah. afraid, when Lord mm. Sugar came in here, yeah. and that, that was Very because I'd given Chip too many um, treats. Well, it was you know these strips that you give them, you know yeah. these meaty strips. Yeah, the things that are good for their teeth. Well, no, no, that that that's the canine type thing that keeps you your, your canine. Teeth. You know, the it's a uh, it's the it's the dog equivalent mm. of. Sort of, you know, biting on a Mars bar to keep your teeth strong. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, it isn't no, a frozen actually. Mars bar. I do that often. I often bite on a frozen Mars bar or a frozen marathon. You need to cut down on all to, that confectionery uh, that you eat. Yeah, to to test your teeth. But anyway, the point of the story is: yeah, what is the point well, of the story? once you start feeding a dog, then the dog loves you for life. But what happened was, Chip used to come in here. He was supposed to be trained as a guide dog. Yeah. The minute it saw me, well, it was a guide dog. It was a guide dog. Yeah. But the minute it saw me, it thought food. And and he, he used to bolt over to see me. Now, my yeah. fear was always that Sean, who was his master, would yeah. be walking down one side of a road. Yeah. I come walking down the other. 
Sure, uh, Chip sees me, thinks, food? And might have dragged poor old Sean into the road, right. you know what I mean? But that so, never happened, did it? No, fortunately it didn't, no. I Good. made sure it didn't happen. Um, but anyway, Butter Hill yeah. is this great hill that goes up, like, you know... Well, obviously it goes up, it's a hill. It goes you up know. and down. Uh, well, well, on the other side, yeah. and, and I've, I've decided... Well, it depends which side you go up, I suppose. Well, it does, actually. And uh, I've decided, that one of these days, I am certainly going to uh, explore that and get out there, OK? Right. And have you seen people cycling down it as well? Because no, that's what no, I haven't, no. That's a horrible saying. story you said there. That should be instantly banned, because mm. somebody's going to get killed. Well, the thing is, if you've got a mountain bike, right, surely the point of having a mountain bike is that you don't just ride around on the road. You ride in, in places where you can have mountain trails. Mountain bikes are designed uh, to be low-level assault course bikes, OK? Yeah. They're not designed to come from the top of a hill down to the bottom. Well, yeah, well, I mean, presumably it's quite exhilarating, as, as, uh, as old Doug said. It's a bit like uh, um, yeah. downhill skiing. You know? Well... You say, you say well, that. at least if you're on a ski slope, you're expecting to see somebody coming relatively fast behind you uh, and you can get out of the way. And you're not really walking. You're going to be on yeah. skis as well. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you don't see a lot of people walking around, do you, you on, the, on the black run? You've never been skiing, have you? I've told you twice. When? I went skiing when I was 15 and 16 Did with you? the school, uh, the King School Chester mm. Skiing Club. Oh, yeah. And um, we went to Interlaken mm. and then up the mountain to a Wengen. Wengen. And then beyond there to a Wengenalp. Right. And, and then, then you don't need training. You just went skiing. Yeah, I did the training there, and then Clan Scheidegg. What? Uh, Clan Scheidegg. What's now, that? Who's now, he? Eh? Who's that? Clan Scheidegg's a place. Oh, is it? It's a town. Okay. No, it's a skiing resort. Mm. Now, uh, the point is, it was very yeah, close. You can't just go skiing and suddenly learn how to do it. I mean, it takes you quite a long time to learn how to be proficient at all. It takes T- about a week. It took me half an hour. Half an hour? It took me half an hour, honestly. Any pictures? Uh, maybe. Maybe my mother's got some in the family album. Mm. But in those days, you lifted up your left hand mm. and the ski length was from the wrist of your left hand mm. to your foot. Yeah. They don't do that anymore. No, skis are much shorter now. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Absolutely. So now, actually, they're easier to ski on. Uh, yeah, they're easier to ski on, Because I yeah. went skiing a few years ago in America where I hadn't been skiing for about 18 years. Yes. And the guy said to me, he said, well, you'll find it a lot easier now because, you know, in those days, the skis were massive. Yeah, they were, yeah. And, he, and, I, and I was able to ski immediately. Well, that's what I'm saying. I picked it I, up I very, never, very I never forgot it. I feel very quickly. Now, mm. point is, it was right on the side of the Eiger, yeah. right? The mountain. Yes. You know, uh, what's that, what's that uh, great film the called? The Eiger Sanction. Eiger Sanction, yeah. that's the one. Great. And there was a monastery around there. So you there claim somewhere. you skied down the Eiger now? No, I didn't ski down the Eiger. I skied in the shadow of the Eiger, uh-huh. okay? And the nursery slopes. Yes, probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a monastery around there. And each evening, you know, when I wasn't into bladderation those days. I was good. only 15. I oh, wish, thank I, had, goodness for wish that. I had been. I was into bladderation. No, actually, I was into bladderation, right. but only in England. Uh, mm. They didn't. So they sort of frowned on it in... Uh, really? So, yeah, in case you were... A bit easier in, in Europe, isn't it? Uh, well, not, 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 not in that place. Couldn't, mm. couldn't get any booze. I think the time, by the way. Uh, anyway, I was going to say to you was, yeah. every evening as we went to the refectory, you know, to dine... Yeah. On good Swedish food. Swedish uh, no, food. sorry, Swiss well, we food. Swedish food. I don't know, good Swiss food. We'd hear mm. this haunting noise. Yeah. Well, the Alpen horn. No, no, it was a load of monks. There was a monastery oh, nearby. Right. Oh, okay. And these monks used to sing as they went to evening tide, uh-huh. as they were walking down the uh, chorus, what's it called? The clo- choristers. Uh, what's it called? I don't know. In, you well, know, in, in a monastery. Yeah, in the a cloisters, monastery. Right? Cloisters, the cloisters, that's right. As they were going to singing things like, you know, I love my God. Well, that's quite soothing, isn't it? It was actually quite yeah. soothing. It's quite mysterious. It's not soothing when you do it, though. It's quite mysterious. I wanted to go and find the monastery right. and uh, and have a look and, and see what it was all about, but you weren't allowed to go in. Oh, really? It was closed one. And by the way, mm. it was... Um, There's a monk that's been uh, that's been doing all sorts of things like that in uh, in Thailand, I think, for Leicester. Yeah, you know, that's great. Yeah, it's a good idea. We should we should give him a call and see if he wants to talk to us. And uh, what I was going to say was... What I, what I was going to say was, was that... Uh, we haven't got time for this No, now. this order of monks yeah. had a vow of silence. They never spoke to each other for three years. Well, how come they were singing? How can you have a vow of silence? They and sing, sing to God. They can only communicate with God. No, it's not a vow of silence. It is. It? it is. Yeah. No. Idiot. No. No. A vow of silence means that's enough. You don't discuss Everton's results at the weekend across the dinner table with your your fellow monk. Really? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk sport. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Porky Vision coming up in the next hour, of course. We'll be going back to Madrid mm-hmm. as well to test the temperature ahead of tonight's live Talk Sport commentary game, Real Madrid uh, against Manchester City, of course, uh, with Mark Saggers from 7 o'clock. Mm. We're going to talk to Oli Nack in a moment, who's over in Germany. Uh, just to uh, let you know, we've had a few tweets from people saying that they're 90% sure, this one from Steve, yeah. that it was Raphael Ravenscroft that played saxophone on Baker Street. Oh, really? Does that sound familiar to oh, you? Oh, thank you for that. No, it doesn't, actually. I don't recognise that name at oh, all. Okay. I, I thought it would be somebody like, I don't know, you know, some mother- somebody like who? 
Uh, Larry Kravitz, was he a saxophone player? No, he wasn't. Wasn't he? No. OK, all right. No. But he was a musician, so at okay. least you're uh, not that far yeah. away. Yeah. Uh, let's talk to Ollie, though, because uh, over in Germany, uh, mm-hmm. there are different views about Pep Guardiola now that he's been knocked out again uh, for the third season in a row in the semi-finals mm-hmm. of the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Uh, his legacy probably is even more tarnished. Ollie, very good afternoon to you. Guten Tag aus Berlin. Guten Thank you Tag. very much. Thank you very much indeed for joining mm. us from uh, from Berlin. Now, uh, I don't know whether the Berliners are particularly bothered about Pep Guardiola and his uh, time at Bayern Munich, but I imagine the uh, the Munich people are. Um, what's what's the mood this morning or this afternoon? Well, first of all, we, we are we are more bothered about Robert Hood uh, since he was born in Berlin, and uh, we've been following him very closely in the last few months and in Leicester City, of course. Yes. Um, but apart from that, uh, yeah, what will remain of, of Pep Guardiola? Uh, good question. Not much. Well, maybe uh, the German Cup title in 2014 and maybe 16 and uh, three consecutive Bundesliga titles. Yeah. Uh, is, it a, is it a bad result to drop out in the semifinal of the Champions League three times in a row? Not really. I mean, uh, how much did Arsene Wenger achieve in the last 10 years in the, in mm. the Champions League, if you compare that? But mm. that was not the goal. It was not Guardiola's goal to lose three times in the semifinal. When he came here three years ago and introduced himself, he said he wants to win the Champions League. And uh, he didn't do it, so he didn't fulfill his dream or his goals. Mm. The, the, the problem is, although you say it's not, it's not bad, it's not good, it's not excellent, it's not par excellence, is it? And the top clubs in Europe, you know, Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, Bayern Munich and Manchester United, who've now slipped off their, their perch, have to uh, try and achieve that excellence at least in a cycle of maybe five years to remain one of Europe's um, pristine premier clubs, one of the stellar you know, outfits in Europe, and Bayern Munich haven't achieved that. Well, in the end, uh, you're right. In the end, you want to read it on your on your letterhead, I yes. would call it, when you send out your letters. And it, it has to say Champions League winners 2010 and 13 and 16, maybe. Yes. In mm. the past, Bayern Munich won it sort of every 10 years. Uh, they got closer... But uh, you don't want to you don't want to read on your letterhead uh, semi final three times in no, a row. No, you don't, so, Oli. Uh, just that, to ask you a supplementary question, please. Is it not the case that the real test is that that Jose Mourinho has passed to win that Champions League with more than one club? Well, uh, that, that's that's a good that's a good question. I, I think you're absolutely right. And if you look at your Pinkus, he did it with Real Madrid. And he did it with Bayern Munich. Right. So I would consider uh, mm. Jupp is bigger than Pep Guardiola. Yeah, I would. Uh, because he, he did it with two completely different clubs. That's right. Uh, the thing about Pep Guardiola, what he tried to do, I think, he tried to change somehow the, the DNA of Bayern Munich. He thought he can do his thing here in Munich. But uh, nobody is bigger than the club. Mm. No, not a player, not a CEO, and certainly not a manager. Mm. But that was also the point, wasn't it? I mean, Bayern Munich did not hire Pep Guardiola to win the Bundesliga three years in a row because no. they knew that they could pretty much hire exactly. anyone to do that. They did hire him to, to, to win the Champions League. And is there anyone now at Bayern Munich who's Failed. saying, perhaps we should have kept Jupp Heinkes on for an extra couple of years? Um, not really. The thing is, uh, let's go back uh, like three, four years. Uh, Jupp Heinkes is turning 71 on Monday. Mm-hmm. So when the decision was made, he was 68, 70, 67, 68 years old. Mm. And you didn't know how much longer he was going to be the manager, how, how much longer he, his health would be uh, good enough to, to go all through that stress. Mm. So in, in the winter 2012, 2013, uh, suddenly Pep Guardiola became available. And he is in his early 40s then. So if a manager like Pep Guardiola is available, you have to go for Pep Guardiola. Mm. And that was definitely, in that moment, the right decision. And, and that, that's, that's, uh, that was that's something that the Pankers didn't really like. Yep. But he um, kind of accepted that decision that was made by Rummenigge and uh, Hernandez. Absolutely. Oli, whilst we've got you on, do you mind if I just change tack a minute and ask you what the reception, Leicester's stunning... Uh, victory in the Premier League, they've won the Premier League here in England, has had in Germany? Well, like I said earlier, especially here in Berlin, um, everybody was, was watching, or a lot of people were watching it, were watching it on live ticker, how that Chelsea-Tottenham game yes. went. 
and we got a lot of answers uh, on our web page and, and uh, people were really interested in following that because Robert Hood, uh, everybody wants him to be back on the national team except for Yogi Löw. Mm. Uh, and and he, he is our, our, our hometown hero, sort of. And uh, it's, it's a fantastic story. And I'm, I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to see Gary Lineker doing his first show in his underwear. Yeah, uh, yeah and, absolutely. And I don't think everybody is, to be honest. <laughs> no, there's uh, been a picture of him already in the national newspapers yeah. in England of him posing his underwear. Right. So, I, mean, I mean, that's another yeah. interesting thing. We talk about, uh, you know, what do you put on your CV? I was reading yes. a piece uh, yesterday about... Uh, uh, about uh, Claudio Ranieri, mm. who didn't uh, apparently put his uh, time in Greece uh, as the national coach That's for right, four yeah. games. He just left that off his CV altogether uh, before yeah. he went to Leicester. Mm. But, of course, Carlo Ancelotti's coming in to, uh, to Bayern. Yes. He's already won the Champions League uh, with two separate clubs, he has, hasn't yeah. he? So, yeah. I mean, do you wonder whether Pep Guardiola, until he wins it with another club, uh, is now going to be considered to be not quite the best manager in the world, which yes. some people still call him? Well, uh, compared to um, uh, your Heinkes or compared to uh, Ancelotti, uh, he's 10, 15, 20 years younger, so mm. he still has some time to, to, to uh, win those Champions League titles with other clubs. Mm. But at the moment, um, he's definitely a good choice for Manchester City. Mm. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'd like to know, i really like to know who is he is rooting for secretly uh, when, when he's at home. He must, uh, be, rooting, he must be rooting for Real Madrid tonight, surely. <laughs> well, you'd think so. I, I think so, too. Uh, that that karma question is uh, he has to get that out of the way. But mm. I think the best tactic would be if you, as a as a CEO or as a club, if you want to win the Champions League, sign Pep Guardiola five years in advance to a one year deal. Yeah. And I'm sure your club will win the Champions League. Mm. <laughs> well, you, you, well, you, you never know. I mean, you, I mean, you, you have that. to think that when he comes to the mm. end of his time at Manchester City, whenever mm. that is, yes. uh, I wonder whether he will do it the same way, whether he will take another year off mm. and say that he needs to break from football or whether uh, he'll sign a deal with somebody else before he leaves. I mean, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Mm. Uh, hard to predict. Um, he has uh, a few of his bodies. Uh, he worked with at Barcelona. He has them already at Manchester. So uh, it's it's kind of uh, it's not his team or his club yet, but he has an area and he has his friends around him that will make it a lot easier. And I uh, I'm sure he will he will fulfil those mm. three years mm. from his perspective. Yeah, indeed. And quickly, Oli, who do you think is going to win tonight? Well, I'm rooting for Manchester City, I have to admit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. Good for you. Uh, I, I hope Manchester can, can pull it off um, uh, with a spectacular Kevin De Bruyne. Uh, I think they can do it. Okay, yeah, okay that's excellent. Ollie, thank you very Ollie, much. Thank you very uh, much indeed. Ever for talking to us. Ollie Knack there reporting into us from Berlin. Yeah, you see, uh, I think one of the reasons why it went wrong for Jose the second time round at Chelsea mm. was that whilst he was away, they were the Champions League without him. Yeah. And when he came back, I right. think the sheer, you know, what am I here? thing he wanted to exactly. do. Exactly. You know, the sheer what am I here for purpose mm. type uh, thing got into his head. Yeah. What could he do to complete to square the circle at Chelsea? It had already been squared while he was away. May well be true. Nick yeah. in Wink Canton has texted in. He says, "Tell Porky the tube it's Lenny Kravitz, not Larry." Oh, thank, thank you. you very thank much you. Indeed. That's it. That's good. This That's is good. Talk sport. We're giving away another slice of £300 now, thanks to Papa John's. Every hour of the show, we'll be asking a million-themed question. All you need to do is text the correct answer and you could win £100 in cash. Absolutely right. Now then, today's second question is this. Who bowled the one millionth test ball for England? Amazing. Who bowled the one millionth test ball for England? Was it Joe Root or was it Ben Stokes? Text player followed by A for Joe Root or followed by B for Ben Stokes to 81089 before 2 of 45, just about 10 minutes from now. Text costs 50 pence and standard network charges apply. Visit talksport.com for full terms and conditions. Jacob's Millions on Talksport with Papa John's. Sign up now for your chance to win one million euros at www.amillionfans.com. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. Now, I've got a few t- uh, tweets to read out. Okay. You can tweet us, of course, at the two Mike's, yeah, at well. IOMG or at Mike Perry. Mm. Mac, uh, correct your Winston Churchill quote. He said, Russia mm. is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. Oh, really? That was the quote. What was apparently. it again? Sorry? Russia is a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside an enigma. That's the one. That's uh, the here's one. one from Rory who says, yep. The monks would have been speechless anyway after Everton's last minute defeat to Manchester United a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, Read the, uh, the vow of silence. And right. Woodenhead says, Porky should join an order of monks and take a vow of silence. Then we wouldn't have to listen to his inane ramblings. Oh, really? Really? Quite a few people questioning your naming of uh, of Lenny Kravitz, Larry. 
Uh, well, actually, they're all very interested because uh, Leon says here, could you please update the audience on what other music Larry Kravitz has been involved in? <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, and Lee says, um, Larry Kravitz, I'm sure Lenny's chuffed with that one. So mm. we'll try and make out that I, once again I've undermined the importance of a, uh, a famous person yeah. by slightly mispronouncing his name. It is, uh, well, not mispronouncing it, getting his name wrong. Yeah, well, there is I'm, a difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian says, is Porky suffering from lack of sleep today? <laughs> he seems to not know the name of anything. Well, so what's new? Your sleep patterns um, have been a lot better since you've been Yes, on they have. Day, they, they, they have indeed. Yeah. Uh, now, listen, I'll tell you what I want to talk to you about. By the way, somebody um, took in here and said, um, hate the thought of sleeping in a tent. The only stars I want to sleep under are the five stars on the front of a hotel. That I totally agree I with. I would certainly go along with that as I well. I think yeah. you and I would agree that if we ever stayed in a three star hotel, that would be equivalent to camping. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Although I have threatened to take the kids uh, to a local campsite where they have yurts. Which yes. are those big yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, know, I know. Looks because they actually, I mean, I've seen these in this place, and they yes. actually look quite luxurious. Yurts look like I tell you what, exactly. It's a like. Nepalese massive tent, isn't but, it? Yeah, but they look like a Nepalese person's hat. Although obviously what? it's uh, you well, know it's a lot bigger than that. Yeah, of course it's bigger, you idiot. But uh, you know, you know, they, the Nepalese people cool wear this hat, and, and then I think they got the idea for the yurt from the hat. Are you sure you it know? wasn't the other way around? No, no, it wasn't the other way around. I got the idea for a hat from the yurt. No, 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 you fool. Now the only problem is you can't take dogs though. Oh, I didn't know that. Why? Yeah. Do, do dogs like staying in yurts? Well, apparently you can't take dogs into the yurts. Maybe they're frightened they're going to scratch them up or something. I don't no, know. I mean, maybe. Um, what about Butlins? See, I think Butlins is great. What about Butlins? Well, Butlins What's is... What's that going to do with anything? Well, down well, You in... don't sleep in a tent at Butlins, do you? No, 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 no. It's, it's just like a chalet or something. I don't think there's chalets anymore. I think really? they're hotels now. But you know, uh, down in Bognor Regis. No, I don't. In Bognor Regis, there's I a Butlins. I haven't Bognor Regis for Bognor a while. Regis on the coast. It's near you. It's not that near. It is. No, it's it is. Where it is. is Bognor Regis? Is it East Sussex? Yes, yeah. it goes well, straight Sussex. down to the coast and it's there. Yeah, okay. okay? All right. Now, what I was going to talk to you about was this. Mm. Um, the actor Tom Conte, right? Tom Conte. Conte. C O N T I. Not Johnny Conte, he's a boxer. Yeah. Now, uh, what's his most famous film? Is it Shirley Valentine? Um, probably. Yeah, okay, there you go. Now, he bought a house for £159,000 yeah. in 1988. Yeah, in Hapsley Garden suburb. Exactly. Yeah. Very much your sort of territory. Very much you know, my around... old style. I used to cycle around there as a child. What did you used to do, cycle around for? Well, because I used to go on my bike across Hampstead Heath and you'd end up from where I live oh, I West see. Heath over yeah. into Hampstead Garden suburb near Golders Green cycle back over the Heath it was great Did you pass what is now Boy George's house? Uh, I didn't usually done. No, done, no Boy George's East Heath Is that opposite Heath. the Spaniards? No he's further down East Heath Road Oh is he? Okay yeah, yeah. Anyway look the point of my story no, uh, used to have no furniture in there because he sold it all off Who? Boy George in the dark days What are you on about? When he was a heroin addict, he sold all his furniture off. Why? Because he needed the money to buy, to buy heroin. heroin. Yeah. That sounds very drastic. Hey, listen, the point of the story is... What is the point? It's a brilliant p- uh, house. I've seen a picture of it. And he paid 165000 for it in 1985, right? Yeah. But it's worth, like, you know... Maybe it's worth even... £15 million now. I was going to say, it's worth more than ten times that now. Now, the point is that what he objects to are his neighbours getting out at, the, you know, leaf blowers... Mm. Right? Yes. And I totally agree. And what he wants to do is he, he wants, you know, some sort of bylaw or something like that to stop these people making this terrible noise yeah. using a machine. But the trouble which... is you can't do that during the day, can you? Because, I mean, I mean, people make all sorts of horrible noises during the day. And as long as it's within what they would call sociable mm. hours, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. I mean, when we're working at night and trying to sleep during the day, mm. you wouldn't believe the kind of rackets that go on out there. Well, he told The Times today, uh, Tom Conte, it's not a case of it being a rich person's problem and poor people aren't affected. Anybody with ears is affected. There are judges and lawyers who live around here. Many with people ears. with ears, yeah, and many people who work from home. I uh, I write and I work from home. It's a terrible noise, and as soon as it begins, the rage starts. It's not very helpful for creative juices inside my body. Uh-huh. It's like having a motorcycle in the room, and I totally agree. But what I what I my main objection against the leaf blowing is not necessarily the noise, which is dreadful, by the way. It yeah. is like having a motorbike yeah, but outside your window. There's lots of horrible noises during the day, isn't no, there? No, no. This is an, an unnecessary necessary one. This is the point I'm going to make. It is so totally unnecessary. Do you know what a leaf blower does? A blow yeah, blows com- leaves. Well, yeah, but where really? do you blow them to? Uh, just wherever you want to blow them to, I suppose. Not and and then away. somebody else comes out and all and blows them back, right? It is. Well, it the is... idea is, I understand, to blow them into a pile. No. And you then take the pile no. and bag no. them all up that into, never a, into a black bag. That, that never happens. The, well, what's the, the point of doing it otherwise? Well, there is no point to it. That's what I'm saying. It's, it is the most pointless noise um, uh, assault on your ears in the history of man. They are quite noisy. The, the strimmers are very noisy as well, though. Strimmers have a purpose. They, 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 they 
tailor the edge of a lawn yeah. or the edge of a, a, a very, piece very of noisy. green. Well, it doesn't noisy. matter. They have a purpose. The leaf blower has no purpose. It is the most useless machine that's ever been invented. Yeah, but is he likely to then want to complain about somebody using an electric lawn mower? Is he going to complain about somebody using a strimmer? No, no I mean, the point he's, he's making live, is... No, if you live in the centre of London yeah. or wherever you live and yeah. you have neighbours, you just have to put up with a certain amount of noise. No, it's you just don't, the way it goes. You don't. It's because... like if you live in a block of flats, sometimes yeah. the people above you or below you make noise, you have to put up with it. Right, this is the equivalent to a bloke going down the street with a chainsaw and starting his chainsaw and then letting it run for ten minutes and then switching it off. Well, sometimes Pointless. you hear that as well. Pointless. Do you know what I was awoken by this morning? What? There's a, the, the people who live opposite me are all having their doors replaced for are some uh, yeah, reason, okay. right? The yeah. council have decided to replace new, all new their doors. doors. Yeah. So all you hear is mm. this, you know, a guy mm. hammering mm. like that mm. and then stopping yeah. and then hammering What time is and this? then stopping. It started about eight o'clock. Well, blimey, you know, I get up at half past four. I don't have any objection whatsoever to the working man getting on and starting his job at eight o'clock. In fact, I commend it. Do you? Yes, I do. Okay. And then he was drilling every five minutes. Yeah, and, good. You know, so it's a very annoying noise, but I didn't complain about it because no, you have to no. get used to it. The, the, the leaf blower, my point about this is it is the most pointless exercise in man. Whoever invented the leaf blower machine has made himself 10 million quid. He's a very clever guy. Yeah. Because he said, look, we can blow those leaves away. If you, oh, thanks very much. I'll mm. get somebody around to do it. You know, get around. Where do you blow them? You blow them to next door's garden. What do they do? Well, you don't they, do that. They, yeah, they, they, do. The they do. They then come out and blow them back into your garden, right? right? Somebody said, blow them up the street, um, blow them into somebody else's, uh, underneath somebody's car. It's but pathetic. But as somebody said to Tom pathetic Conti, you know, if you don't like the noise, why don't you just go to the back of your enormous house and you won't hear it? You will. You hear it everywhere. It's such a loud noise. But it's such a pointless exercise. You're always moaning about something. Leaf blowers should be leaf suckers and they should suck leaves up and mm. mulch them up into something you can then use as an agricultural product. Well, like a leaf make... hoover. Yeah, yes, that's right, to make well, maybe something, something like that. Why don't, you, why don't you invent something like well, that? Well, it should be invented. Why don't it you should go be talk invented. to Dyson about it? Dyson? Yeah, yeah, he's a very rich man. Do you see him in the, in the uh, Sunday Times? Never mind Times how rich he is. He's got about one and a half billion quid. Well, why don't you go and suggest a leaf well, sucker to him? That's for inventing a few things, well, you know? Why don't you tell him you want to patent a leaf sucker? You ever used his blade hand dryer? What? The blade hand dryer. Why are you making a noise, you <laughs> know, like a Michael Jackson video type dance? S- sorry, like, thing. like a, a Tommy Cooper, just like that. Yeah, yeah. You put your hands in, and this very sort of um, fierce uh, jet Dries stream. Your hands. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's good. Great. One, one, one and a half billion quid, eh, if I'd invented that. So, so, no, I could so, have invented that. So, what you call excitement for you these days? No, it's using not. But a I mean, Dyson I mean, hand dryer. I mean, I mean I've got a Dyson um, Hoover. Look at the time. You want to see how much. It's you not know. a Dyson Hoover, it's a Dyson. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Oh, that's right. That. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. Well, it gets it gets uh, the fluff up off my car. Yeah, Lots of it, by the way. Never mind. I have to empty it every now and then. Yeah, of course you do. I thought your housekeeper did all that. This is talk sport. <laughs> Talk sport, we are the two mites. Got a couple of tweets to read out. Robin has sent in a picture of a man wearing a Nepalese hat and a picture of a yurt. Oh, and, yes. Uh, they don't look at all alike. Really? It has to be well, said. Well, it must, yeah. have been a, must have been a different style of hat. Very, very different uh, mm. look and altogether. And right. uh, uh, Phil says, uh, here, here, Porky, great idea about the leaf hoover. Uh, mm. However, um, someone says, uh, by the way, I own a leaf blower, which has another feature uh, yeah. called a garden vac. How amazing. So apparently he already does have the sucking Well, uh, Alan says the same here. Some leaf blowers can also be used to suck, but do not always pick up effectively in damp conditions. Well, yeah, well, OK, well, then suck it up and take him away. I just don't understand. But it'll still make the same noise. Eh? It'll still make the same noise. No, it won't. It won't, because you need more power to put that sort of blast of Rubbish. air down the tube Rubbish. than you do to suck it up. Not no, true. you do. You d- I know that for a fact. Anyway, we'll, we'll be talking about some scientific yeah. uh, developments in the world, of course, of technology, because Matthew Avery's mm-hmm. with us. He's the head of research at Thatcham's, which is the uh, the sort of um, technological research arm yeah. uh, of the road safety business and insurance companies and all of that. That's right. Because uh, we keep reading more and more about um, driverless cars coming in. And more and more cars at the moment have got things where you can turn, you know, it, it parks the car for you, it turns the mm. wheel for you, all that sort of stuff. And yeah. We'll ask Matthew uh, whether he agrees with some of the comments that have come uh, in recent days mm. that uh, actually... Actually, this might be a bit difficult if you're driving at 100 miles an hour down a motorway. Matthew, mm. very good afternoon to you. Hi there. Thanks very much indeed for, for mm. joining us. Um, driverless cars, I know, are going to be here sort of faster than we think. You know, they're, they're, they're Google are testing them. They're, t- they're testing cars out in the States all the time. They're, they're testing them here as well. Volvo are talking about doing some kind of trial in London. Um, but we've already got some cars that do these things, as I was just describing, like parking for you and, and turning uh, corners for you. How far away, sort of realistically, are we from, from, from the first proper driverless car? Well, you're right. I mean, what you know, people call autonomous cars, they are just round the corner. In about 2021, you're going to be able to get in a car 
and drive that car. But when you get onto the motorway, you're going to be able to push the button and it's going to be able to drive for you. So that's going to let you do something else. That's going to let you watch a film or read a book or do something else. It's not until 2021 when the driver is going to be able to come what we call out of the loop. So he's not involved. Up to that point, the driver is still liable. So you're right, there is technology on vehicles that you can buy today. And there's going to be a big change of vehicles in about 2018 when on the motorway you'll be able to take your hands off the wheel for a few minutes at a time. But still, the important thing is the driver is still liable. The driver is still responsible for driving. Mm. So not until 2021 you can come out of the loop. This is, this is absolutely incredible. It, re- it really is, uh, Matthew. And can I put this comparison to you? If um, an airline passenger um, was sitting in the cabin of a, an airliner in 1952 and there was a guy in a uniform standing next to him and suddenly the passenger said, what's your job? And the guy in the uniform said, oh, I'm the pilot. Yeah. And the passenger said, what do you mean you're the pilot? Who's flying this plane? He said, it's not an automatic pilot. You'd get the screaming abdabs, wouldn't you? And start running up down the plane the screaming. Ah! Ah, is this what as, are the screaming abdomen? Well, you know what I mean. Is this the land? Sorry about this, Matthew. Is this the landlocked equivalent of of that? If you see what I mean. Well, right? well, sort of. But bear in mind, a lot of vehicles now have got a lot of the sensors that make this stuff work. So you've been able to buy cars for a few years with something we call AEB, autonomous emergency braking. Mm, yeah. And we want people to go buy cars with that stuff on mm-hmm. because the great thing about that is that gives you a radar sensor or something at the front of your car, an eye that's always looking. So most crashes, about 80% of crashes, happen actually about 20 miles an hour. You run into the back of somebody, you know, at the traffic lights on the island. And this is going to stop that. And this stops the sort of whiplash injuries and this stops those minor fender benders that create all that congestion running Mm. to our big cities. So this technology is already on the vehicles now. And if people want to start getting a taste of that technology, you want to buy a car with AEB. But it will but be really, but but really also we'll have, yeah. I mean, we'll have a situation that we have now where, yes, there are lots. I mean, I think your car, Paul, has got that braking system, but, hasn't it? But, it? but most cars yeah. on the road are not new cars. So, so you'd have, Matthew, presumably a situation on a motorway where maybe 10% of the cars were driving themselves and everybody else was just doing what they normally do. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the fleet turnover, as we call it, takes about 15 years, so it takes a long time to get big penetrations of these vehicles in the fleet. Mm. But, you know, there is going to get the time when you've got the haves and the have-nots because, you know, in sort of 2021 onwards, you're going to be able to get on the motorway and go and watch catch-up TV. So Mm. your commute to work, if you've got an hour-long commute in heavy traffic into work, suddenly that's going to be attractive to you. You're going to be able to catch up on TV or catch up on emails while the guy next to you is going to have to sit in the traffic and drive. Yeah. So but, is, but is it safe? But is that going to be realistic if you're speeding well, down a motorway? Because, I mean, I'm not sure, and it may just be because I'm not perhaps ready to embrace the technology. Hmm. But, you know, I think if we, the car was doing 100 miles an hour, Rather like if I'm being driven by somebody... Well, you shouldn't be doing 100 miles Well, whatever the speed is, 70 miles an hour then, all right? Yes, Or 80 if they put the Mm. speed up. Mm. I mean, I can't really concentrate on much else because I'm I'm, I'm slightly worried about what else is going on around me. I I was going to ask you, Matthew, have psychologists... Yeah, yeah, and I'm trying to qualify your question. Are psychologists involved in the human... Instinct. You get involved with you. You, can, you, you, in. you can't see out the front of a jumbo jet airliner when it's on automatic pilot, mm. so you don't know what's in front of you. But you know full well what's around you and in front of you in a car. So have you have you had psychiatric sort of tests on these people? Well, look, we've we've done a lot of testing of what we call the human machine interface. How do people interact with cars? Mm. These radar sensors have got a visibility today of about 250 metres. Mm. The best radars you can buy today can actually see through two or three cars in front to see cars in front of that to see what they're doing. So the vehicles have already got really sophisticated sensors on them now to keep you safe. And that's why we're seeing a 40% reduction in some crashes with these systems. Mm. That's today. That's not 2018 or 2021. Mm. And it's only going to get better. So these sensors... Now, what you are saying is these cars are all going to stick to the limit. They're going to stick to the law and abide by the law very, very tightly. And therefore, they're going to be quite cautious and very polite. Mm. But the argument is... If you're watching catch-up TV, you don't really care. As long as you keep safe, mm. you don't care that the guy's jumping in front of you, whatever. Mm. So, 
Well, I, 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 like... I think I would be. I'd want to be yeah, aware of what was around me. I mean, I I presumably the other thing, Matthew, because there's pressure on all sorts of uh, uh, bodies now to kind of mm. reduce the amount of cars in city centres, then these cars would also drive, uh, as you say, uh, uh, at a very, very low speed inside city 20 centres. 20 miles an hour. And it would take you forever to get everywhere, wouldn't it? Well, they're going to stick to the speed limit, but bear in mind there's a lot of studies that said if everybody's doing the same speed, then the traffic moves much more efficiently. So you know on busy traffic you can be doing 70 miles an hour and then suddenly you have to do 30 miles an hour, and that's because all the traffic's moving in ways and doing different speeds. Mm. It's much more efficient and actually much better for the environment if all cars are doing the sort of same regulated speed. I know it's boring but it's yeah. much safer and it's yeah. much better for the environment. Okay. Okay. Matthew, I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much indeed. Matthew Avery, Head of Research at Thatcham's. This is TalkSport. Two mics in for Hawksby and Jacobs on TalkSport with Papa Johns, who are giving you the chance to win one million euros. Go to a millionfans.com and sign up for your chance to win. Like a bit of guitar music, do you there, Porky? Uh, now, who was that? Um, who do you think it might be? Uh, that sounded... A wild t- guess. Yeah, that sounds to me like Santana. Did it? Yes. Nothing like Santana. It is like Santana. Who is it, then? Uh, it's uh, Larry Kravitz. Larry Kravitz? Yeah. Oh, he's a guitar player, is he? Yeah, he is. Uh... Excellent. Well done. What else has he uh, done? Has Lenny he... Kravitz. Hey? It's Lenny Kravitz. Lenny Kravitz. Has he made any famous records? Yeah, well, that's pretty famous. What's that called? I don't know. Well, it's not that famous, though, well, is no, it? it's a pretty know famous know. record. Is it? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, he has uh, done quite I'm a sure, lot. I'm sure, I'm sure he's a very commendable uh, musician. He but, is. But uh, of a very little interest to me, I'm afraid. Yeah, I don't suppose um, you've got his greatest hits, then. No, I haven't got, no, no. No, I've got, no I, never mind. I've got, actually, I've got a new copy of Abba's Greatest Hits, because the old one was wearing out. Really? I play it regularly, yeah, yeah. How awful. Um, I just imagine you mincing around in your penthouse. What? To Abba. Sorry, what do you mean, mincing? What well, does that mean? What sort of word is that? You don't really dance to Abba, do you? No, You're gonna mince no, around to no, 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 no. Do you no, dance I'm... around the flat? No, I don't. I have you... it. I have it on whilst I'm doing other things. Are you going to tell us I... about this pigeon incident, by the way? Oh, that's terrible. Uh, so what happened was so you bought this bird bath a few weeks ago. Bought the bird bath, right? And you put an Everton gnome in it. I put an Everton gnome. Be yeah. acting more like a scarecrow because none of the birds were actually coming in. Well, they weren't. Now, what happened was the other night I heard a flutter. Yeah. So I looked out of the uh, kitchen window into the roof garden. Yeah. And a pigeon had landed on the rail right. next to the bird bath and was pecking away at my bird food. Oh, I thought you... you put water in it. I have put water in it. Well, where was the food then? Well, the food is in like a little bag. Attached to the wall next to the bird bath. Oh, so you've got a bird feeder as well? Yeah, bird feeder, oh, that's, okay. right. that's what it's called, yeah. Is it in like a mesh sort of cylinder? No, it's not actually. It's in more like what you would call a sort of crate, uh-huh. you know. But a crate? It, yeah, and it's, got, it, and, it, and it's not little bird food bits. It's got like tennis ball type things in it. Oh, right. I don't know what they are, but yeah. anyway, the birds like it. They start uh-huh. eating it, you know. Right. Anyway... But if it's open, then you'll get all sorts of other animals in there, won't you? like well, rats, well, no, squirrels. No, no, it's high off, off of the ground, you mm. see, so, so well, they can't. Rats can climb. Yeah, I don't have rats. There are no rats around where I live. Of course live. there are. There are rats everywhere. You don't get rats in penthouses, you fool. That's why I don't there live on the ground. There are rats in every street around here. I don't wish to know. There are rats no more than seven metres away from you at any one point, oh, I think. Everybody says that. You never mm. see one. Right, now then, let me tell you this. So, anyway, what happened was, mm. and there I was last night, you know, going about my business, sorting things out, you know, uh, putting together some material for the day show, that kind of stuff. I heard this tremendous crashing putting noise. Putting together material? Yes. Like what? Well, what do you mean? What do like, you mean? What? You've actually practised some of the stuff you've come out with. I don't, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. You are honestly a complete and utter intellectual loaf sometimes. Anyway, Go so on. I hear this crashing noise, and guess what happens? I don't know. I can't imagine. The birdbath crashes to the ground. Oh, right. They knocked it over. Yeah. Because what happened was two pigeons landed on the same side of it at the same time, yeah. both in down in water, mm. and their weight, bang, it collapsed the birdbath, smashed all over the place. Uh-huh. I had to go out and repair it and put it back. Um, but what I'm worried about is this. And I said this to the aviary person that I consulted before I bought my bird. Aviary bath, okay. person, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not an aviator, by the way. They're, they're an no, aviator's a flyer. The, the aviary person. Yeah. And I said, look, I said we do get a few pigeons round here. I said they nest on the top of the building, you know, on the peak of the building, all mm. that kind of stuff, and, and they can be sometimes a bit of a nuisance. I said, um, what I really want to know is how come I can make my bird bath available to little thrushes, yeah, starlings, sparrows, sparrows, robins. Uh, robins. Yeah. By the way, you know robins are around all year round, don't you? They don't yeah. just come around in winter, you know. No, I know that. And they're not red breasts; they're orange breasts. Well, it depends. No, no, they're orange. Anyway. 
So I said to the guy, look, how can I make sure this bath is for those little birds, mm. those attractive little birds, yeah. who one day will leap off the bird bath onto my index finger and, uh, well, you know... So you'll be like one of those cartoon characters. No, I'd be like um, the Birdman of Alcatraz, really, really, if you see what I mean. Uh-huh. And, um, and he said, well, he said, you'll find that the pigeons won't be attracted either to the water or to the food that you put out because they have other sources and they don't need it, you well, know? what were they doing crashing into your bird bath? Well, I don't know. This is, this is what I can't work out. I'm going to ring him up. Maybe and... they'd lost their homing device maybe, inside maybe, their brains. Maybe, maybe. You talked about that in the past. But I'm going to ring him up. I'm yeah. going to ring him up and find out why he gave me a load of bum advice about uh, how to nurture the bird population. Because well, it's, it's very difficult, isn't it? Well, well I, as long as you don't get seagulls, you certainly won't want those. No. Uh, well, I get seagulls down on the coast, of course, because yeah. that's where seagulls live. Yeah, but they live all over the place as well. You don't get it, you know, you don't get them in downtown um, Stockbroker Belt, Surrey. Are you believe sure? me. Oh, certain, certain, certain. And, and, but I, I would like to try and find out how you make this, um, this distinction between what I call... Uh, domestic birds mm. and the filth, which yes. is uh, the pigeons. Yeah, you know the what flying I mean? rats. The flying rats. That's what right, the yeah. used to call yeah. them. Now, a couple of mm. people have texted in on the subject of these uh, driverless cars. Oh, yes. uh, Rich in Essex says, My wagon has a device you can see a mile down the road in heavy traffic. What? A mile down the road in heavy traffic. I couldn't get what the expert was telling us about the car having a sensor that can see three cars in front. Does that mean when the th- car three cars in front crashes, you automatically stop? Well, I suppose it means that it can see what the car three uh, three cars in front is doing. Yeah. Like, is it slowing down? Yeah. Uh, is it turning left? You know, yeah, sure, kind of sure. I, t- I tell you I'm what... still not very confident about these cars that drive themselves. Well, and, I... and Phil says yeah. this, AEB doesn't work properly in bright sunshine and doesn't recognise problems. We will have more crashes in practice. What's AEB? Uh, that's what that technology I think you were talking oh, about. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. The sensory type stuff. No, I mean, the point is, in my new Merc, right, you know, which is a very expensive car, obviously. Very expensive, yeah. uh, Man of the people. The first time I was was, was going down to the coast, all of a sudden, this big um, red triangle light came up on my computer. Uh And I thought, what is that? If it's red, that's a problem. Well, of course it is. If it's Uh, orange, it's not too bad. No, no, it's red. It Mm. It was a red triangle light. And I thought, hmm, have I got a Friday afternoon car here? Yeah. But Mercedes don't make Friday afternoon cars. What do you mean, what's a Friday afternoon car? It's uh, Friday afternoon cars, traditionally, were cars that break down all the time. Really? Because it came to the end of the working week uh-huh. and the lads knocked off early and okay. uh, didn't put all the necessary bolts oh, on and all mean. that kind of stuff. Oh, you know right, what I mean? OK. So, uh, so that's sort of going back to the old days of British Leyland? Uh, well, actually, Vauxhall's Nels Port, because mm. that's where a lot of my mates' dads work. OK. They were always on strike. Yeah. And that was the end of the British car industry. It was, yeah. They were always on strike. Yeah. But they got a, uh, a discount Vauxhall Viva. Mm. Uh, my mate had a... Um, as long white... as it wasn't built on a Friday. As long as it wasn't built on a Friday afternoon, yeah. you're right. Um, my mate's dad had this fantastic white Vauxhall Viva with a black vinyl roof. Yeah. What a head turner that was. Really? For want of a better word. In oh, those yes. days, I'm sure. In yeah. those days, yeah. Mm. But anyway, the point of the story is, uh, I thought, ah, what is this? And without even flinching, I managed to get hold of the instruction booklet from uh-huh. my glove compartment whilst I was still driving... That doesn't and, sound very safe. No, well, you know, I'm a multitasker. You should admit to that. Multitasker, and I managed to... Um, I thought you'd said in the past you always have to have two hands on the steering wheel. Well, you should, ideally, but this was OK. So, anyway, so I... Uh, and I flicked through with my left hand using my, um, my thumb I'm and index finger. I'm not sure you should be admitting to this. No, no, so no, no, you're still no. driving. Anyway, yeah. So you didn't pull over and do that. No, I found... Uh, well, there was nowhere to pull over, mm. you know, and motorways and all that. So uh, I found out that this was... So in, you're on a motorway? No, I was on the A3. Right. A3M, actually. It was a motorway, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So I, f- I, found out, I found out that this was a warning light, mm. that the, you were too close to the car in front. Oh, right. Now, that's all right. So, so while you were too close to the car in front, you reached over to the, uh, the glove box, to took, find out out the, the, yeah. took out the instruction yeah. manual, had a look at that. That's right. Uh, and did you get any closer to the car in front while you were doing that? No, but this is the interesting thing. I then decided, right, I will put more distance between me and the car in front. Mm. Guess what happened then? Yeah, you were too close to the car behind. Yeah, exactly. Another right. another red flashing light went off yeah, to it's indicate a never ending dilemma. And, this, and, isn't and, it? and a beep, you know, beep. Why don't you just beep, pull into the slow beep, lane, beep, let them all pass beep. you? And and that indicated that you were being tailgated. Yes. Now I can't stand being tailgated. No, it's not. If anybody pleasant. does it to me, I do one of two things: either switch on my uh, lights right. so that the reverse, so that the back lights on your car come on, mm. and the driver behind you thinks, thinks you've breaking. just braked, but you haven't. But it doesn't work anymore because if you've got a brake light at the top end of the windscreen. Oh, I see, uh, yeah, Then they yeah. can tell that you're up not actually braking. Because yeah. that's such an old trick that nobody falls for it anymore. That's good thinking, because yeah. I, have, I have got one of those. Yeah. Um, and, and or the other thing I could, uh, I sometimes do, is I wait until the half-bake who's driving the car behind me mm. gets to, like, a roundabout or something, yeah. you know, or, or a slow part of the car. Yeah. And then the minute I see 
you know, virgin road ahead of me, OK? Yeah. I then... you don't see very much of this part You of don't see very much of it. But I taunt him by slowing down to about 30 or 40 miles an hour mm. to get him very frustrated yeah. until he's waving his arms around and making rude gestures yeah. and all that. And then I put my foot down on the accelerator yeah. of a three-and-a-half-litre Mercedes and that guy doesn't see me for dust. Really? Right? I have gone like... You're a... boasting again. Uh, sorry? You're just boasting no, again. No, 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 this is my driving tactic. Yeah. This is my driving tactic. Sounds dangerous to me. No, it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. It's very safe, actually, to get out of the way of the guy behind if he's trying to tailgate mm. you, OK? Oh, OK. <coughs> and that works every time. Does it? They never come near you again because they'd already be humiliated. Well, this is where I wonder whether this road rage is going to work. If you've mm. got somebody in a car who's sitting there, as that guy was saying earlier, you know, yes. catching up on the television, yeah. and there's nobody apparently driving it, you know, it's going to create yes. an awful lot of con- confusion, I would have Well, maybe. Anyway, we've got, got lots got more coming up. Tim Vickery is going to be here uh, talking about all the latest from uh, Brazil. Uh, the Olympic flame, I think, arrived there uh, a little bit earlier oh, on. Oh, did it really? Uh, Porky Vision's coming up in a little Yaw. bit as well. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> Tim Vickery's favourite piece of music. Indeed. It never gets old, I have to say, listening yep. to it. It's very, very good indeed. Tim, a yep. uh, very good afternoon to you. Welcome. Thank you very much. And what a roller coaster. <laughs> to Ferry. We've all been on this season. Exactly. Yeah. And you're not flying down to Rio yet either, are you? I mean, that's another week away. So uh, so tell us what you've been doing. I understand you went to watch the, uh, uh, the wonderful Tottenham play the other day. I was there for the championship decider. Mm. Uh, Chelsea very kindly sorted me out some tickets. I've mm-hmm. done a few favours from over the years, mm. which meant that I had to be in with the Chelsea supporters. Oh, which dear. Was, uh, w- mm. It was a tough one in right. a game of such emotion because, you know, the football supporters being what they are, your, your, your rival failing is, is almost worthy of more celebration than you succeeding. You yeah. know, it's not mm. enough that I succeed, my rivals must fail. Mm. So uh, it was... It was Blood and thunder, cracking game. Everyone got their money's worth. It was tremendous. You must, have th- you must have thought you were at one of those River Plate derbies. It was yeah. almost I, that well, good, wasn't it? Especially when Eric Lamella stamped on, on, on the hand of Fabregas. <laughs> yes, yeah. that's, uh, that, that, that took me all the way back home. Um, at the time, that, that, the, 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 the wonderful Hazard goal, which I suppose, as you have to say, it's a goal worthy of, of defining any championship. Mm. Um, they're all going mad around me, and, and obviously I wasn't. You know, So one guy turned around to me and said, are you a Tottenham supporter? And I thought it was time to play the Brazilian card then. Yes. So I said, no, I'm, I'm from Brazil. William, very good, very good. I'm yeah. from mm. Brazil. Mm. And I've been j- jabbering away to my girlfriend in Portuguese all night, so I just about got away with that and, yeah. and, and came away with life and limb intact. <laughs> yeah. Yes, well, you were there to watch William, obviously, weren't mm. you? That's right. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Listen, just yeah, one point. Just one point in that match, Tim. Um, when Mr. Pochettino leapt onto the field and ostensibly to get between two warring players, he was in fact guilty of a crass um, uh, rule breaker, and that is that not only did he leave his technical area, he actually entered the field of play, and then really could have been done for assaulting a player on the opposite team. I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed there are no calls for retrospective action on that uh, issue. Yeah, well, I think Mark Clatterberg played this one by different derby rules, isn't he? didn't he? And I think what Pochettino was trying to do at that point, he was trying to ensure that Danny Rose didn't get sent off. So yeah. I think he was a peep a peacemaker there. Mm. So maybe that, that was that was, uh, that was was taken into account. And sometimes, I think, the spirit of the law is worth more than the letter of the law. Yeah. Mm. And I think given what happened at the end of the game as well, and we're now hearing that Gus Hiddink ended up having a huge row with yeah. some of his uh, staff in the tunnel That's telling right. them that he was the boss and they should stop doing whatever they were doing outside the Spurs dressing room. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, the retrospective panel is going to be busy for months, I think, with all this, aren't they? It is. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I do feel iffy about Derby sometimes because I've, I've been to loads. You know, in South America, the, the, the history of the game is so built around the Derbies, but mm. so often they generate more heat than light, don't they? And the amount of hatred that you see, mm. I, it, it, the older I get, the more it upsets me. I'm obviously becoming, becoming something of a big girl's blouse in, 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 in my seniority, mm. but uh, I, I don't get as much in, enjoyment from, from the hostility of the Derby games as I used to when I was a kid. All oh, mm. right. Mm. Let's talk about the Copper America, because that uh, kicks off next month in, uh, in the USA, of all places. It does, yes, despite... Donald Trump's plans to build a wall to <laughs> keep them all out. They're yeah. all coming, Donald, whether you like it or not. And, right. and Argentine TV have played with this. In, in, they've, they've come up with a trailer 
for the Cop America, where they, t they, they take Donald Trump's words and him speaking and cut it with images of the Argentine football team. Mm -hmm. So you've got Donald tr Trump saying, we're having people coming in through the border. They're not people that we want. Mm. And to, to, to this, you get the Argentine national team and the fans, you know, yeah. getting off at airports. Um, he said, th 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 there's a bit where he's saying uh, that these people are total killers. Mm. And you get a clip there of Argentina scoring a goal. Right. Uh, That's and, very clever, uh, isn't know, it? Yeah. yeah, no, it's beautifully done. We have no protection, and you get Messi dribbling three or four players. Right. Uh, and then they've got no, him saying, nobody builds walls better than me. And the word for a 1-2 in Argentina is a wall. They right. use the word. So to, to that, you get Messi and Aguero playing a, a lovely 1-2 to, 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 to set up a goal. And it all ends with a caption there in Spanish for the, for, the, for the Argentine audience. Yeah, the best thing the Americans could do is not let us in. And I thought that, that was a really witty way to play with Donald Trump and, yeah. and build up the Copa America. Sure, but I guess uh, you wouldn't be putting Argentina down as a favourite to win it, would you, or, or would you? Well, I, I think they probably must be up amongst them. It, it's a strange competition, this Copa America, because it, it's a little bit inconvenient in that it comes in the middle of World Cup qualification and a lot of teams, I think, will be giving priority to, to the World Cup qualification. Or in Brazil's case, they're giving priority to the Olympics, which is coming up, obviously, right. on home ground in, in August. Mm -hmm. Now, Argentina are at the Olympics, but they're not giving priority to the Olympics. They'll, they'll use the Olympics more or less exclusively to, to, to blood young players. Now, remember, from Argentina's point of view, they haven't won a senior title since the Copa America of 1993. And this generation, the Messi, Aguero, Di Maria generation, you know, they've knocked on the door a couple of times in the last two years in the World Cup, in the Copa America last year, but they haven't quite got there and they're running out of opportunities. So uh, Argentina will plan to be pretty much at, at, at top strength. And I think you would have to put them among, amongst the favourites, yes, because they are motivated to bring this long dry end to a run. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, while you've been away, uh, the Olympic flame has arrived in uh, in Rio uh, to begin a torch relay similar to the one you described, I guess, uh, that took place here. Um, is there a lot of excitement around that now that the flame has arrived, or is it still a bit muted? It's still a bit muted, and it still it still seems quite a long way off, I think. Mm. Um, in the case of London, I, I turned up uh, in London, I think it was three weeks before the Olympics, and at that point it was still totally negative and the, the, the torch going around the boroughs of london um something like 10 days before it yeah. was that that started to ignite it and then you had the opening ceremony which which, which really sent things through the roof and after that it seemed that we were living on paradise island for a while mm. i'll be very very interested to see how this plays out in, in in rio and in rio for two reasons you're starting from a lower base one because the Olympic tradition isn't, isn't anything like as strong in South America. And football is the overwhelming uh, uh, number one sport. And, and two, because there, there's so many other problems going on at the moment anyway, with the, the economic crisis, political paralysis, and so on. Um, so I don't think that the mood is really going to pick up now. We're, we're, what, some like 90, 93 days to go. I think it will pick up in the last two weeks before, and especially when the world starts arriving, because that, that will give it a cosmopolitan buzz, which really will lift the city. And I'm really looking forward to seeing it. You know, in the World Cup, I was working 18, 20 hours a day, and, and I didn't really get time to enjoy it. The Olympics, I want to work, I want to earn some money, but also I just want to sit and watch the world go by and watch how everyone gets on. So it'll, be, it'll be fascinating. The first Olympics on South American soil. Yeah, will be absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, Tim, what's this uh, weird story, uh, intriguing story, the Brazilian who won the Pushkas Prize for Goal of the Year in January is now an unemployed man. That's like saying yeah, Deli yeah. Alley, after that magnificent, you know, up and over and spin and turn, is no longer playing football. What's going on? Indeed, it was a, it was a fantastic goal. The, the, the fellow's name was Wendell Lira. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a goal out of Kung Fu Kids more than football. It's, mm. it's, a, it's a twisting overhead kick. But it was, unlike the Deli Alley moment, yeah. it was an astonishing moment in the life of, of someone who's been a journeyman player. Right. And uh, this, this catapulted Wendell Lira to, to, to all of the uh, to, uh, you know, front page, back page, middle page yeah. all over the world. And he's saying that it interfered, all this fame interfered with his pre-season, interfered with his preparation. Um, because, and, and then suddenly there's the demand on him to reproduce that every week yeah. when he could play for 100 years without doing anything similar. Yeah. So he, he only played for, for a small club, a, a club called Villanova mm. in his native state of Guyana. He played about 10 games, didn't do very much, so he's a disappointment. So his contract, which was supposed to be to the end of the year, it's now been ripped up and he's looking for a club. Good so, 
uh, January's hero mm. has become uh, be- become a maze maga here. Yeah, guy's Dude, a loser. Mate. Well, Tim, great to talk to you. We're out of time, I'm afraid. We'll catch up with you same time next week before you head back to uh, uh, to Rio, and uh, uh, we look forward to that very much indeed. Look forward to it. Speak to them. Tim Vickery there uh, giving us the update on uh, everything that's going was? on. Uh, where? Yeah. Uh, he was in a very busy uh, place, I would imagine, Noisy. probably in a sidewalk cafe type scenario. Yeah, could be, yeah, could have, could be enjoying doing a the, of, uh, enjoying the, the continental. Ca- enjoying the cafe culture of yeah, London, yeah, yeah, I would yeah. suspect. Could be. Uh, Porky Vision's coming up next, though. Slightly different start to to, to uh, Porky Vision. Now, what is up the theme music to? Uh, I don't know. Oh come on! I've off no it. idea. You're joking. You're I'm having not joking. Me on. No, I'm not. That is the greatest TV series that's ever been made, uh-huh. and it's coming back this week right. on Thursday night. So right. I'm going to shock you all yeah. by not only reviewing something that I have seen, right. but previewing something you're all going to see. Well, don't give the game away. Then. Peaky Blinders. Well, I've never seen Peaky Blinders. Peaky Blinders. I've it's fantastic. It's the most fantastic. I know. I know you rave I, about I it. Seen. I heard the writer right. of it on uh, on the Alan Brazil Sports Oh, he was great, wasn't he? Yeah, Mr. Very, Stephen very... Knight. Stephen Knight, who yeah. Who gave me a Peaky Blinders hat. Yes, he did. Now, I'm going to show you something. See mm. this? This is a TV magazine. It is. And uh, it has all the TV programmes in it. That's right. Killian Murphy. Okay. His mesmeric eyes, his stare, mm. his facial bones, which speak volumes. Facial bones? Yeah, 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 they do. What do you but mean? Look his, at that his, hat. Uh, um, yeah, it's the same look as the hat. one you've got, isn't yeah, it? Well, exactly. That it looks a lot better on him, mind you. That is a genuine Peaky Blinders hat. I've does, got one of those. Yeah, but it looks a lot better on it him. It was given to me by the writer, Stephen yeah, Knight, right. the man who invented Peaky yeah, I Blinders. Remember I told you not to wear it to Cheltenham because yeah, everyone yeah. was wearing them down yeah, there, well, including some of the people yeah, who were getting yeah, themselves yeah, into trouble. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now... Yeah. This um, looks as if it fits Now, this yours, is the start... This, yours is too big for you. This is the start of the third series. Mm. I can exclusively reveal there is a fourth series. Well, Are you I can't, sure actually, you should do that? Because Stephen Knight said that. Don't do that. Now... This gets going at uh, 9pm on BBC Two tomorrow night. Yes. And guess what? An Friday explosive night. Thursday start. Night. Thursday night. Yeah. An explosive start. Mm. Killian Murphy. Well, don't who give of the course... plot away. No, I've got to. I've got to. No, who, of can't. course, plays Tommy Shelby, yeah. right? Right. Guess what he does in the opening minutes? I don't know. Kills someone. No, he gets married. Does he? Well, he don't tell ma- us that. No, no, you need to know that. I know these things. He gets married oh, to yeah, a mystery but, woman. Yeah, people will be watching <laughs> now, for the first time, perhaps, yeah, yeah, yeah. and not wanting to have the game given well, away by you. Well, if they're watching for the first time, they should have done what I did. When and you say reviewed, it's a mystery woman, do yeah. you know who the woman is? You just don't want to give it away. Uh, that is true. You do know who it is? Uh, no. You don't know who it is? No, but no, but the viewers don't either. Well, she's, that's you why find she's out a mystery when you woman. watch it. No, no, you don't. No, no. Oh, really? No, no, he's done it behind his family's back and all this kind of oh, stuff. Oh, I see. You know so I mean? she didn't actually see the wedding, then. Well, you see, the thing is, the Shelbys are a very tight clan. Are they? And so to get somebody introduced from the outside poses two particular problems. Yeah. One... The unity of the family. Can they be trusted? But secondly, security. Because, yeah. of course, you know, they're a gangster family. Mm. They are the Midlands equivalent of Al Capone. Yes. I mean, Killian Murphy is Al Capone. Mm. Now, what I find very interesting mm. is Tommy Shelby getting married yeah. because right. in the last series, mm. he was a mega Rogeriser. Was he? And if he's a mega Rogeriser, yeah. isn't that going to put paid? Maybe, maybe, maybe it doesn't. Maybe in the world of Tommy well, Shelby, knows? maybe in the world of Tommy Shelby, he gets married for convenience. Yeah. Now, um, for instance, he is such a committed Rogeriser mm. that in one episode in the last series, he drove his uh, Ford T model uh, car. Ford T? No, I think it was a Rolls Royce, actually. It was one of those very well, first... Well, you can't tell the difference. Uh, well, with a Model T Ford and a Rolls Royce. They all look the same the in those Model T days. Ford is like 1930s car. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, it's earlier now. It's about 1922. Um, uh-huh. And you know that all the cars look the same. They basically had four wheels yeah. and a grill mm. and a steering wheel Unlike and a roof. the cars nowadays. And a roof. And Which a roof. also have four wheels, a grill, a steering wheel well, and a roof. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they, they were all the same shape because mm. they were all built like milk crates, if yes. you see what I mean. You and know what I mean? And the engine was anyway, all in the same place. he drove, for rogerisation purposes, he drove all the way from Birmingham... Are you trying to get that word in, like, more times than you've ever had it put in the Porky Vision before. No, I'm trying to... they have to caution you. No, no, I'm trying to indicate yeah. the character and yeah. style of, um, right. of Tommy Shelby right. by Killian Murphy. Okay. Now, the point is, he drove all the way 
uh-huh. from Birmingham to Epsom. Right. In the days Which before... Which a long way in those days. Well, there was no M1. There was no A3 either. There was no M25. But well, still, he didn't have to worry about someone coming up behind him reading a book. Oh, 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 that's a bit harsh. Uh, there was, in fact, an A3, but not the same A3 that we've got today. It was a different A3, well, OK? Well, it was probably in the same kind of direction, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, yeah, it went, uh, it went south in... Uh, in uh, and north. Actually, the A3 doesn't go to Epsom, I just remembered. So it probably wasn't on the A3. You live in Epsom, don't you? I do, yes. Why yeah, don't you know where the A3 goes? Um, it goes nearby. It goes near uh-huh. to, you know, Epsom sort of. Epsom Bypass. Yeah, Yule Bypass these days on the way to Epsom. Yule but Bypass I mean, it wasn't Epsom. around in those days. Right. Now, the, the point is, he mm. goes all the way there, allegedly. Well, maybe the woman he met there is the woman he's going to marry. No, I think so, because we, we so? haven't seen this woman before. Okay. And he goes there to see a woman who owns a load of horses to uh-huh. tell her that he wants to buy or sell a horse. But that's not the real reason. He's there for Lego varieties, if right. you know what I mean. Yeah? Physical activity. Physical activity. Yes. Kind of stuff. But at the same time, mm. the main um, plot involving that, and I won't use the word again because it's offending you, obviously, the R word, right? Well, the I don't word. mind you using it, it's just I don't want you to be overused. No, OK, I totally agree. It's a family show. It's a family show, you're right. And uh, the main plot had taken place it. because what happened was, yeah. brilliant, brilliant plot. This woman turns up um, and starts working as a barmaid in the pub. Right. What are you laughing at? I'm just at? laughing at a couple Why? of the tweets that have come in. Sorry, Why? carry on. Why? No, you carry on. Well, Sorry. there's a picture of a Mercedes with a bashed up uh, boot and saying, this is what your car's going to look like if you keep doing that uh, business at roundabouts. That's disgraceful. That's <laughs> disgraceful. I hope that's not on the A3. Uh, now, what I was going to say to you was, um, um, she turns up We're to... We're nearly work... out of time already. No, no, she turns up as a barmaid, but yeah. in fact, she's a, uh, she's a British government spy. Who is? Uh, the woman who turns up as the barmaid, but is of course... the woman he marries? No, it's not. But she well, falls this in. Woman, then? She falls in love with uh, Tommy Shelby, who just got uh, married, and then becomes a double agent. What? No, 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 no. This is in the about? last series, not the next series. Well, why are you telling us about what happened in the last? Well, series? Well, to set the scene for the new one that's well, coming you tomorrow tell night. Us what's happening tomorrow night? Uh, anyway, it ends up with people getting shot. <laughs> a lot of people get shot, and they get the teeth pulled out with pliers. Excellent. And they get slashed across the face with razors. Not that's for... why they're called the Peaky Blinders. Right. They sew razors into the peak of their hat. But right. mine, given to me by the author, why shouting has not got any razors in it. Thank God for that. Uh, that was Porky Vision. Um, I don't know okay. what you make of it, but uh, Piggy Blind starts on Thursday night. Let's just talk sport. Manchester City, they have a task on their hands, but it isn't an insurmountable hurdle. Full time here at the Etihad, first leg of the Champions League semi final. Manchester City nil, Real Madrid nil. This team play a way very similar in the, in the way that play here at Etihad. So. We are not afraid to go to uh, Bernabeu and we'll see which team play better in that game. Madrid have got it back again. 30 seconds to go before the end of the game. Ronaldo now moving towards Zabaleta in the left wing position, skipping past the Argentine. Right footed shot! And Real Madrid have come from behind twice to lead in the Bernabeu. In from David Silva. Plenty of air underneath this one. Zora over the head of that. Aguero! 1 0 Manchester City, a priceless away goal! It's a nil-nil. It's put us in a good place. We believe we can go over there and get the result we need. You know, there's a certain style of play that they need to bring in a certain level of performance and hopefully that will play uh, into our hands. We're very, very strong at home. We like to score goals there. Down the right, looking for Bale, into the centre. Bale against the goalkeeper, clicks it over the top of the advancing Joe Hart. There's your £100 million man. Bernardino, Aguero to his left-hand side, De Bruyne, round the back of David Luiz, he scores! Kevin De Bruyne, a crucial away goal for Manchester City. Champions League action live on Talk Sport tonight. Real Madrid against Manchester City. The second leg uh, of the uh, semi-final, of course. Nil-nil from the first leg. Can Manchester City get into the final for the first time against a team that have already won uh, ten times uh, the particular competition? Uh, the Moose is over in Madrid. Uh, he's joined by uh, Mark Saggers earlier on this morning. Mm-hmm. Moose, uh, a very good afternoon to you. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. You all right? Yeah, yeah very, very well. well very you. well indeed. How's Madrid treating you? You've been there for quite a few hours now. What have you been up to? Oh, it's, no, it's a lovely city, it really is, and, and the weather is just absolutely outstanding today. I mean, since the moment I got up this morning, there has not been a cloud in the sky, and it is baking hot out there in the sun. I don't think Mr. Parry would enjoy it very much. Absolutely, although he would enjoy you, you, you would enjoy the, uh, the the number of bars and, and restaurants that there are. They're, they're being frequented at the moment. That's Mainly a slur actually, on my I... character. Thank you. Well, what's wrong with enjoying a few bars in Madrid? Yeah, you know, I don't go there to drink. I don't watch the football. I mean, mm. When you go on holiday, you don't go or on holiday. You go on holiday. To work. No. You don't go on holiday. No, That's no, true. no. When you go to a foreign country, you don't try and sample the delights of, uh, of that country. Work always comes first with me, Moose, so perhaps you could tell us just exactly how those Manchester City <laughs> fans are behaving. 
At the moment, the ones that I've seen are behaving really well. Um, I have to say that there's there are upwards of towards 10,000 that are expected here today. Mm. I've seen quite a few that haven't got tickets. Uh, a few that I was speaking to have been offered tickets up to around about three or 400 euros a ticket. So uh, the touts are expected to do some great business here. Mm. But it's going to be a sellout tonight, and it's going to be an absolutely amazing atmosphere inside the Bernabeu. Mm. It will be. And any clouds on the horizon for Manchester City themselves? I mean, they've got a couple of injuries. Silver's not playing, of course, which is going to be a problem for them. But uh, uh, they're going to have to cope with Ronaldo who might not be 100% fit. No, I don't think Ronaldo is 100% fit, but from what, everything we were told from the minute we arrived yesterday is that he will start. The City fans keep asking me about whether or not I think he'll start. I think he will. I mean, you know, whether or not he gets injured again, and that, that might put him out of the Euros. I don't think that's going to be on the mind of either Ronaldo and certainly won't be on the mind of Zinedine Zidane. But having said that, the Real Madrid fans are so confident. Not only are they going to get to the final, but they're going to win it for an 11th time. So uh, the City rivals wait in the final. We could have a repeat of two years ago, 2014, but City will be out to stop them tonight. And most City fans I've spoken to think that Kevin De Bruyne is going to be the main man for them. Mm, he could be. Um, I don't quite understand why those uh, Real Madrid fans, Moose, are so confident, because my view is that if Ronaldo was starting tonight, he's only 70%, 70% fit, and you know mm. as well as I do, a, a discontented uh, Ronaldo on a football pitch is a blinking nuisance. You know, he snaps at people, they're not delivering the ball to him properly, he can't do the things he wants to do. That's disruptive to a team. I think City have got a great chance tonight. They have, and, and of course they have the fact that they don't... They, they didn't concede a goal last week at the Etihad, so mm. they've got, but they've got, they've got a score draw on their side. Obviously, a win puts them through as well. And if it is nil-nil and they can frustrate Ronaldo and co, even to 90 minutes, they get the extra half hour as well to try and win the game. So there are so many things in their favour. The, the one stat which I've just been going around in my head since I arrived mm. here is that, unfortunately, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo and co haven't conceded a goal inside the Bernabeu in this competition all season. And he's Jolly. scored four goals. He scored more goals in it mm. than uh, than anybody else. So mm. I mean, the, 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 you can make your stats any, anything you wish, but I mean, City has got a job to do tonight. I remember a few years ago, Glasgow Rangers unheralded. They used to do the same sort of thing. They drew at home and then they got through somehow away with the away goals rule or or by mm. winning away and actually got to the UEFA Cup final, which was in Manchester. So mm-hmm. City have got a chance tonight. I, I don't think it's an uh, an uphill task. Well, I think they've just got to be professional. They've got to keep their concentration. And, and the spine of the team has to work for them. Mm. Uh, Joe Hart in goal, Vincent Company, uh, obviously De Bruyne, and, and then up front, Sergio Aguero. And, yeah. and Joe Hart, of course, was one of, what, four or five players who were uh, in the team back in 2012 when they actually were leading Real Madrid in their, one of their mm. first outings in the Champions League. Mm. They're a much more experienced European side now, aren't they? Albeit that they've got different players. So they shouldn't be intimidated by the stadium and the crowd. Absolutely not. And don't forget, this is a side that knocked out Paris Saint-Germain. I mean, I was at Stamford Bridge when, when PSG won there. And I thought they were a little bit lucky overall to beat Chelsea uh, on on that particular occasion. Then, of course, they drew Manchester City and everyone thought, oh, you know, this is where City might come a cropper against Ibrahimovic and co. That didn't happen either. So, you know, they've got the chance tonight. They've, they've, they've scored away goals throughout the competition. And as I say, that, that crucial thing they didn't concede last week means that they are on the front foot if they can do what no one else has done this season in the competition and score a goal. There's no better place to qualify for a Champions League final. In Madrid, in the Bernabeu. I mean, I've been to the stadium this morning. It is just the most awesome stadium. Mm. I mean, I've been to some, some great stadiums around the world. I was, you know, the Maracanã was, was OK at the World Cup. You know, I was a little bit... The Maracanã was OK? Mm. Well, yeah, I was just trying to go good. clips of the week again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. No, 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 no I, didn't think, I didn't think it was all that, if I'm honest. Mm. Uh, the Allianz Arena, I absolutely think that's a, a, a fantastic arena. But the Bernabeu is just a step up on that. And you look at the outside, the frontage of the, of the stadium, it just, it just smacks you around the face mm. of history and of, of, of class and of everything that Real Madrid stands for in this city. Well, sure. And, and, and if you've got time, go to the museum and have a look at the uh, 10 uh, European well, Cups that they've got there, which you've, you've probably already done. Just very quickly, it, it, Moose, yeah. just very quickly, yeah. um, as you're in uh, Madrid and you're near the Bernabeu, any sign of a, a, a shambling, dishevelled old soak hobbling around out there? Because we haven't seen Ball Preen Turner for about 18 <laughs> months and I, you know, nobody it's, quite it's knows further, what he's, he's doing. He's in a, in a boat further south, isn't he? Is he living on a boat yeah. further south? 
Yeah, the last I heard of him, he was seen spotted somewhere halfway between Mallorca and Morocco. And he keeps he keeps on, on social media saying, you know, why don't you get down to the gym with your mates Brazil and Parry and this, mm. that and the other. Yeah. Well, you know, all I, all I can say is that, that he might be missing Madrid today, Mr. Parry, but yeah. Madrid is not missing him. Uh, well, I, I think that's probably true. He, a decent chap, nevertheless. He just fell on hard times. He just, I think it was Very the, harsh. Well, enjoy the I game. It was the sangry, uh, wasn't it? Enjoy yeah, the game, Moose. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Mm. Moose uh, mm. over in Madrid, along with Mark Sagers, of course, uh, uh, Ray Wilkins uh, alongside him for tonight. Uh, commentary live on TalkSport. Uh, it's a 7.45 kickoff, but you'll be getting all the build-up, of course, coming up next uh, with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff on Drive. <laughs> Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as busy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. You did once say that Mike mm. Oldfield had, uh, had drunk himself to death in a pizza. <laughs> and when it turned out, you were confusing him with Jerry Rafferty. Oh, well, do you so know the name of the guy who it. played that? I can't remember his name. No, I can't either. And, and you don't do training. You just went skiing. Well, I did the training there, and then Clan Scheidegg. What? Well, that's quite soothing, isn't it? <laughs> Very interesting. A bit like being with Abbott and Costello or Laurel and Hardy.